can't say the total. I do, but I get to the long term. Hey, short term, forty-five minutes. Yeah, I mean, I pull up to the gate. Um, but it had to come off of central. Yeah, just come in off of central. Yeah. You got a ticket. Young lady. All of this. I don't come downtown very often. That's what I've ever done. We're going to get more of your money. Yeah, you can tell that's the last time I did this. In the 80s, <laughs> that's your regular seat, so you become, oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I was causing such consternation either, so sorry about that. <laughs> hey, Marcy, can you hear us? Yeah, I, now I can hear you now. Can you hear me? We can. Okay. Get started. This kind of one's for. Did you start the recording, though? Yeah. You just minimize the room. <laughs> everything still the last signature by the way but did you get out there left him put him all right well i believe it's four o'clock so get started and i'm uh very excited to call this Meeting to order, um, the very first, uh, which took off Board of Governors meeting. Um, it's it's very exciting that to, to have you guys in place and finally get the ball rolling on this. I want to start out definitely by saying thank you all for volunteering your time and and committing to this to this board. Um, it's it's obviously going to be extremely important for for the future of Golf Wichita and all of the things that we're looking to do. Um, and to get, you know, I, I know some of you better than others. Um, hopefully I just met today for the first time, but I've definitely heard great things from about each of you and, and what I know about your past. It's a, uh, it's really great for me to have a board with this much knowledge and, and passion about the game and different ideas that I feel like you guys are going to bring to the table. And I uh, just want to say thank you very much for, for uh, committing to this board and, and helping shape the, the future of Wichita golf. Um, we do have one member, uh, Marsha Alterman. She is on Teams meeting. She couldn't be here. She's in California. Um, so uh, she she will be available on, on screen. Um, the, uh, the first meeting is going to be a little bit different. Obviously, it's going to be a lot of um, kind of planning and, and constructing how these are going to go and moving forward. Um, we're going to dump a lot of information on you guys so that we, as we move forward, try to give you all the uh, kind of the issues, the the plans that we have, and, and the financial situation, everything. So you have as much information as possible so that we can uh, work together to to come up with uh, the best plans possible. So uh, there will be a lot of information dumped on you tonight. tonight. Um, and I think I would like to start out just with uh, kind of intros from from all the board members. Um, if you guys wouldn't mind, I'd like to just kind of go down and have everyone kind of tell us who you are, uh, what your connection to this board is, and um, 
you know, a little bit about yourself. So we can just go down the road. That's okay, Evan. Um, I'm Evan Skelton, originally from Larney, Kansas. Got my undergraduate at Friends University. Just finished up my master's at Wichita State. I've uh, had a short stint working out at Auburn Hills in the pro shop. Been part of the men's league the last year or so. Met Jesse out there. Me to be a part of this board. Excited about it. Perfect. Thank you. Smith. Um, I'm originally from Wichita, Kansas. I served active duty eight years and 10 days in the Army. Moved back here to Wichita, Kansas. I started uh, Cynthia's Mobile Bar. Um, and then that's how I got into this was uh, knowing, having experience with the alcohol, the number one mobile bar company in the state of Kansas. So if anybody has any questions on alcohol, I'm definitely your guy. Um, and then food as well. I know food business is my thing. So uh, what I do all day long is business and I'm proud to be a part of this. Glad to have you. Thank you. My name is Randy Blummel. Um, I help coordinate the men's club. Uh, Jeff Van, Jeff Vane. And uh, also me and my wife help coordinate the couples league out there. So I just spend a lot of time at the golf course. Uh, retired, been retired for about six or seven years. But uh, spend a lot of time and very interested in golf and wanting to help. So. Laura Alexander, I'm also retired. Uh, I've been golfing since the, been an adult anyway. Um, I've been here in Wichita for the past 40, 45, 47 years now. And I've, you know, I've watched the, how the east side golf is, is, has kind of dwindled down and I just wanted to make sure that I'm able to help support whatever efforts we need to keep the bottom of the ball. Also a, a, a member of the McAdams Golf Club. So, uh, McDonald's is, is our home course. My name is Jesse Ramos. Uh, I work for a company out of Washington, D.C. I work with colleges and universities throughout the United States. I cover 25 states, Puerto Rico and Canada. So I'm in the air a lot. So these meetings, if I know when they are, I can adjust my schedule. Um, I become a member uh, due to Steve. Uh, I'm typically at Auburn Hills quite a bit and I'm excited to be part of this. Thank you. Mike Jordan. Hey. I've been in the business here in town for about 65 years. Retired three times and went back to work for side shop. I just always loved golf and interested in it. And I, been with the city for a long time and I, I just don't want to see it fail. I want to continue to operate as we were operated, but at a little better higher level, maybe. Uh, always got interest in it. Okay, thank you. And Marsha. Hi, everybody. I'm Marsha Alterman. I play golf at Sim primarily, although a lot of other places as well. Uh, Ex president of the ladies' club there. And I uh, was a late starter with golf. I didn't start playing until I was about 50. Um, and I've been playing about 20 years. So that tells you everything you need to know about me uh, in terms of my golf. My professional background is in administration and management. Uh, I've worked with uh, sports officiating in particular for the last 25 years, and uh, particularly with uh, the nonprofit professional association of uh, volleyball officials is where my the primary uh, work I've done in the past, as well as I'm currently a contractor with seven division one conferences in terms of training their volleyball officials. But golf is my sanity. And uh, so I'm real interested in finding more about how the sausage is made at City of Wichita golf courses. Perfect. Golf typically drives people insane. So it's good to hear. Um, yeah, I think this group, um, it, what I see being so great about this group is so many different Types of players and, and so much different possibility for input uh, from different directions to really make sure we're serving the needs of not just the you know, serious golfers, the social golfers, and all the different customers we need to have in our courses. So, um, one more time, I want to say thank you all um, very much. All right, next up we would go to public comment, but I don't believe we have anyone signed up. So, we will we'll move on past that. Uh, some announcements, a little bit, a couple of housekeeping things to start up. <laughs> the first thing we, I wanted to talk about, we, this is right now, it's the board of, with Golf Wichita Board of Governors. 
Um, do we want to keep that name or, or do we want to go with something else? Uh, I know the off board of governors seem, I don't know, I'm not a huge fan of that and I've had a discussion with several people. So does anyone have any, any ideas of another name or do you guys want to keep the board of governors? Any input at all on that? I think it sounds pretentious. I, 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 <laughs> do you have another name in mind? I mean, your thoughts? Um, I, I'm trying to think. I, what did you say? Yeah, the off advisory board, and maybe. I mean, well, if you do want to just kind of spec up. Probably not advisory as much because as I'll talk about in a minute, we have a lot more powers and responsibility with this board than we did previously, which is a really big part of this. And I think too, because and also something I'll talk about and again, I'm Nate Johnson I'm with the law department, so I'll kind of cover some of this my law stuff. I think because it's not on the agenda, maybe what we can do is get a few ideas. OK, for now. Um, and people can circulate those. Maybe we can send out kind of an email for uh, potential sure. ideas. I can even kind of just mix and match some of the different <laughs> uh, boards that we have to put golf in there too and come up with a couple ideas. Um, and then we can get that on the agenda for Perfect. next time as well. So, okay. <laughs> quick suggestions, very, very similar to the park board, would be the golf board, mm -hmm. um, or even uh, something like council of golf, golf council. Um, so that kind of gives you the idea of us working with in the government within our system. Just a couple of suggestions. I'm sure there's a lot of other ideas. Uh, Nate's absolutely right. And not just uh, the, the board, but we could go out to public in general ask for some suggestions. Okay. So yeah, maybe put that on your radar. Um, think about it. We can uh, we can revisit this next meeting and, and maybe have some suggestions in place. So, okay. Um, the, the next item I have is the day of the meeting. Um, I know as soon as I sent out this invite, a couple of people responded and said Wednesday is probably the worst day for them. So instead of going back and forth with 500 emails, I've come up with a couple of dates that I was hoping I could throw out get to you guys today, and we maybe we could um, come to a, an agreement on a date. So the first, and these are based around the availability of this room. So I'm looking at that calendar and trying to come up with dates. The first option I have would be the third Monday of each month at three o'clock. Uh, we could do four o'clock also. The second option would be the third Tuesday of each month at three or four o'clock. And then a third option would be the first or second Tuesday. Uh, okay, basically any Tuesday, first, second, or third Tuesday at three or four o'clock. I don't know if, if Tuesday or Monday are better days for everyone. Is there any conflict with? with I would like to stay away from Monday if possible, so maybe a Tuesday afternoon. Any that works for me. Yeah, I'm, fine. I'm fine with any day. Okay. Fine. As long as I know ahead of time, dates, I can work with the schedule. Okay. Yeah, we would, once we finalize it, we'll send out a calendar. Um, so I believe that someone, yeah, I think, I believe that we need to be voted on. So I would like to make a motion to uh, maybe. Well, yes. Yeah, that's, yeah. And well, I'll talk. Let's wait, until wait on that. Okay. Okay. I just had a question on that time frame. On that uh -huh. you anticipate these meetings lasting several hours, one hour. Uh, I'm the plan is to schedule them for two hours, and depending on what's happening, I mean, they could be short, definitely, but they, we may get into lengthy discussion and and go a little over. But I, I would, I'm going to try to keep them within that two hour frame. Okay. So my question being then. Four o'clock, it runs to about six, and then versus three o'clock to five. Uh, I don't know. How, but I'd, I'd prefer the four o'clock time myself. Yep. I may be playing golf and can't get none. But <laughs> can't have. <laughs> Anybody else have a comment on that? I would prefer four. I would prefer okay. four as well. Yeah. I would um, just since this is the very first of the month. I don't want to wait six weeks. So how about the third Tuesday? Throwing this out, the third Tuesday of the month uh, at four o'clock. Okay, Nate, I'll, I'll lean on you. Is there anything yeah. that I? Oh, no, and that sounds good. No, okay. Gotcha. 
Okay, perfect. Okay. So. Okay. Um, and then a couple of things I just want to kind of let you guys know about that I'm working on that I will be presenting in the next couple of meetings. I'm working on a business plan uh, that encompasses every aspect of, of the golf business um, and our plan, kind of a five-year plan. So um, I'll, I'm waiting on the final financials for, for 22 to close. And I've, I've been working on it for a while, but I'll get that put together for you guys to kind of look at and we can kind of work together to critique it the way that, that the board sees fit. Um, so I'll be presenting that fairly soon. Um, I'm also working on a new kind of course policies, procedures, and standards. Um, just kind of the policy for the customers as well as the staff. Um, so I would I will get your input um, as we as I get those final out or get those complete. I will send them out uh, for you guys to look at and again to tweak. So um, that's just a couple of things I want to let you know I'm working on. And then finally, I think it's very important as we move forward uh, to point out that golf is a strictly it's an enterprise fund uh, division it's not it's re completely relying on revenue and not on tax dollars so as we make decisions I think that's something that you know most people understand but I think it's something that we definitely need to mention is that as we make this decision there's no there are no tax dollars that supplement um, what we're doing so it's completely reliant on the revenue that we make within the golf so I um, just wanted to say that and, and get it out there um, any, any questions, any other kind of announcements or anything that, that need to be brought up before we move on? Yes, sir. These bylaws in here about setting green fees or fees for the facilities and what have you, is that actually going to be done by the board and then recommended to the council? The council always had the final approval on that. Yeah, he's Nate's going to kind of talk to us about the uh, bylaws, but this board uh, is different than a council. It's uh, you guys do have a lot of authority and a lot of power. Um, maybe you can speak a little more on that. So I haven't had a chance to introduce myself. I'm Troy Houtman, the Director of Parks and Recreation. Uh, my department oversees golf, so we work together on getting a lot of things done. So to answer your question, I'll, I'll answer that question and then share some other information as well, is that when we went back to council with this, we call it a board, council provided authority for this board to manage all fees. So the decision and the buck stops here with this board on so many different things, but particularly in regards to fees. And so that's why it's really important that we um, stay on top of all the items and issues that that's coming up. Um, and just in general, I just wanted to take a step back and just say thank you for being part of this board. This board is going to be very influential and very, very important in the future of golf here in Wichita. You guys are going to have a lot more authority than the golf advisory board had prior. The golf advisory board actually reported to the park board, and then the park board would make recommendations to council to reduce the redundancy and the bureaucracy and to get things done quicker. Uh, council developed this board, this board right here, help manage and direct golf and with that a lot of authority and responsibilities to go with it so to be honest uh, this board probably has more authority than any other board across uh, all the other departments uh, that includes the aviation board library board uh, you guys have a lot of authority so um and we're excited about that because it's going to help us get where we need to go quicker and it's actually Folks that are stakeholders, that are golfers, that know our system, that they're going to have direct input on how we do things and get things done. So uh, staff is going to be working hand in hand with that. Uh, we're going to bring a lot of information. We're going to share a lot of proposals, uh, but this board uh, has a lot of authority and will be making votes that will have a huge impact on the future of golf. So I just want to share that with you guys um, and introduce myself as well. More question. Yes, sir. Because this Open Meetings Act, and I've got a lot of questions that I want to discuss with I don't know with the board or with Jesse or what. Uh, mm -hmm. In terms of the, the legalities of the Open Meeting Acts, is it all right for me to talk to Jesse directly? Yes, it is. 
Okay. And you can talk to me as well. All right. Well, anybody, I mean, <laughs> in terms of the board itself, then, in order, do you have to have a quorum to talk to, to these individuals or can you talk to them individually or not? Nate will give you all those details. But when it comes to talking uh, person to person, staff to staff, you are more than welcome to talk to staff. Um, I, I manage and, and work with the park board, very similar situation. And I take park board questions, whether it be an email or a phone call on a regular basis. And so we can have conversations about uh, a, a proposal that's coming up or initiatives that we want to enact in the future. So uh, that conversation with staff is very, very important. It's huge. The one final thing, though, to, again, I've got a lot of questions I'd like to discuss with people. Uh, I'd like to do that prior to the third. Is it all right to get, not the third, but the third Tuesday to talk to you a little bit prior to this next meeting or not? Yeah, definitely. You can, you have Jesse you can meet with Jesse anytime. Yeah. Right. Sure, you can give him a call and he'll set up an appointment with you. I mean, I've been and just to kind of jump ahead a little bit, this will be part of the bylaws presentation, which is the next thing on the agenda for sure. No, but normally it's like you can talk to people and staff and other people on the board, but we can't talk in a way where it effectively becomes a meeting. Okay. So sending an email to the whole board kind of becomes like a meeting because everybody's involved. And if you talk to like three or four people, it kind of becomes a meeting because we got three or four people. You talk so that's, but we can talk to staff. We got to get stuff done, right? So that's like, that, that's kind of the tricky part. But really, it's like, don't reply all to our emails is the really big thing. But I'll have a few other kind of tips in just a second. I just want to clear it up because I don't want to drag this specific meeting out because I've got stuff I want to talk about. <laughs> get through that, air that out someplace else. Okay. Looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, the uh, the next item would be it's the summary of board expectation. It's just a um, a couple of, a couple of things more kind of what we're hoping uh, from this board. A couple of things I wanted to highlight. And and first, we we are going to need to elect officers. Um, it'll probably get into this. I, I think we can do that at the next meeting. Uh, we're going to need a president, vice president, and a secretary. Um, I know you guys don't know each other real well at this point, or you may or you may not. So, um, you know, I'd like to be thinking about that between now and the next meeting uh, to possibly have some nominations in place. To maybe decide if that's something you would be interested in and interested in, in taking on one of those off, um, officer positions, or uh, think someone else would be a good fit. Um, I'd like to try to get that in place next meeting so that we can. Uh, we really want to hit the ground running with this board. There are a lot of things that you're going to see soon that we're ready to to move forward with, and we just need to, you know, get you guys input and and start going. So uh, maybe before the next meeting, think about that, figure out if that's something you're interested in, and then we can make the nominations and and get that in place next meeting. Um, me personally, as I've kind of mentioned, input and ideas. I really am looking forward to having you guys help give input. You play golf on the courses, you talk to people all the time, uh, being able to bring that to this board and really help us create the blueprint that's going to help meet the, the desires of, of the most golfers that we can. Um, you know, as someone that loves golf, plays golf very seriously, it's easy for me to think as just like someone that plays the way I do, but they're all type of golfers. So I'd love to get that feedback and, and really try to make sure we're we're trying to help everyone the same. Um, and then finally, it, right now, it's, we've got the setup as a once a month meeting. Um, so that is the, the commitment. Um, again, the meetings, I'm going to try to set them for two hours, but they some may go short and some may go over depending on what we're, what we're talking about and what we're involved in. Um, I know in the bylaws, I think there's an option if we get down the road and we see it, uh, we're, we're in a place where we could drop that to once every two, two months. I don't even want to think about that right now because we've got so much going on that I want to talk to you guys as much as possible. So, um, so for me, again, and mainly just, I just want to stress, I cannot get enough feedback and input from you guys. Don't ever hesitate to let me know if you think something should be done different and bring it up in these meetings. And uh, that's what I'm hoping for. So, okay. Any questions about anything so far? All right, well, the next section is, or the next uh, item is uh, the bylaws presentation by Nate. So get on the thing. Let him talk about that. 
Hey, thank you. Thank you to everybody for being here. And hopefully this will kind of just maybe set us up a little bit for how the board will function uh, moving forward and give us a framework for how we might take decisions, consider public input, um, and make our own recommendations and talk with people otherwise. The, the two main things I'm going to talk about here are the bylaws that we might be implementing. Um, we've got a draft available for your consideration, and I'll talk a little bit about how we do that, considering it's our first meeting, and it kind of feels like we don't have any rules yet. So how do we implement those rules? And then related to that, the second thing is open meetings issues. So we, so we understand best how we can talk to people without violating any state uh, laws. Part of that too, I'll talk a little bit about conflicts, this and that. A lot of it's just in the bylaws though. You can always ask me questions. Um, my information should be up on the golf board page when we have that available. We can reach out to Jesse or Troy uh, for that information as well. Um, so the bylaws, we do have a draft of that. And the thing that we usually do with new boards is we take this first meeting to kind of consider the bylaws, digest all of the information that we have, which is quite a bit, kind of get our feet on the ground a little bit. And then at the next meeting, a lot of times is when we actually vote on and implement the bylaws. So you might notice there's a few places highlighted beyond the bylaws adopted date um, for consideration. I'll point to those in a second as well. But this is kind of the setup that we do with the park board as well, where we first consider an agenda item on one month. We consider it as the board, allow for an opportunity for public input at that meeting, as well as the intermediary period between that meeting and the next meeting where we then take action at the second meeting or further down the road. So that's a, a way to maybe consider our process on this board as well, but not to like say how you all need to do anything, of course, but just to try to give a bit of a framework for how to take actions moving forward. So we've got all these sections here. I mean, creation, right? And this is a lot of this is like kind of legal jargon that I'm a bit more familiar with that you don't need to be too concerned with. It tracks the city code the ordinance that created the Golf Board of Governors. So that's that creation section. We just need to reference the code sections. It's got our purpose here that explains what the idea is behind this Golf Board. Um, we've got our membership and terms laid out here. We've got members here, so thank you so much for being here. We greatly appreciate it. That's the hardest part, I think, from uh, your side on figuring out this membership part. Um, if you have any questions on what your term looks like or questions on membership technicalities, please just let me know. I think that would be the easiest way to deal with it than trying to parse all of this and how it relates to all of the different uh, code sections governing boards at the same time. I did want to highlight the powers and duties section four, because as Troy mentioned, this is not just an advisory. This isn't an advisory committee. This is an actual board that takes um, step like can actually implement policies, change the fees. Um, you know, we've got merchandising plans, customer service plans, sales and marketing plans, things that are actual implemented steps that can be taken by this board without having to go to council first. So that's not to say we can't make recommendations to council through this board. That's definitely a possibility. That's a lot more like what boards do in the city system here. But this board is also empowered to take steps such as setting fees, establishing plans, other things under these powers and duties laid out right here as well. Um, section five are officers, and that's the first highlight. And I, I did want to note that because for this kind of board, normally we would have a president and a vice president. And that's what we would really need to consider. You know, do you want to be president? Do you want to be vice president? Who do we know on the board? Stuff like that. That's what we want to consider before the next meeting so we can get some of those nominations in. Um, I, I, it does note and others because sometimes boards will have a secretary that's appointed or voted on or maybe a clerk or some other role as well. As you'll note though, um, we do have this set up where we've got someone helping from the uh, from the park department um, to serve as a secretary effectively. Um, I'm basically the legal secretary helping out here with this board as well. Um, so that kind of work is done already. So we wouldn't necessarily need a secretary like we would on some other boards because we've got staff already on it. But that's up to your consideration. I did want to highlight that in case anybody had questions about it or wanted to change it um, before the next meeting when we kind of maybe finalize stuff. And the idea here being too, unless I hear pushback, I'll just prepare a final draft or work with Park to prepare a final draft that just says president and vice president. If we jump down to the meetings and procedures, we've agreed on the third Tuesday of the month from 4 to 6 p.m. So I'll get that information entered as well. Um, and as noted previously, we can switch to quarterly meetings, but we've got so much work that doesn't seem exceptionally likely at this point. Um, we can call additional meetings. There's a few options there. I'll probably include both where we can call additional meetings, either the whole board votes, majority, 
or the president can call a meeting as well with a pretty standard procedure on our boards. Um, but if you've got questions on those sorts of things, let me know. Um, I'll talk again. I'll talk about open meetings a little bit at the uh, a bit at, after the bylaws. The last major thing I wanted to note, though, is Section Nine in, in this part: a conflict of interest. Um, this is a little weird because all of us are kind of interested in the golf courses that we're <laughs> representing here. So it's it's not exactly the same as having a business interest necessarily. But if we do start having a situation where our business dealings or economic interests or familial interests like family, um, might, it's family's economic interest too, might be affected by some decisions, just let me know. Right, and we can talk about whether it creates an ethical issue. The big thing normally is just, hey, you know, I might have a conflict. I'm not going to participate in this decision. It's not a big deal either way. The best thing is just to be upfront about that sort of stuff, and it comes up from time to time. Uh, you know, it's a golfing community. We know a lot of people as part of that community, so it's going to happen sometimes. Best just to stay above board on all that. Um, and again, if you've got questions on any of this, let me know. Uh, this board will vote by just a majority. That's what our quorum that's established by the code. So technically during this meeting, you could take actions as well. We could act on the bylaws right now, but again, trying to give you a bunch of information, hopefully to kind of consider um, over the next month as we implement it. Um, the, the last big piece of things I wanted to talk about was the Open Meetings Act. And this is gonna be kind of a little bit more legal information. I will send along an explanatory email uh, to the group after this that provides kind of the basics of it. And the Open Meetings Act is basically to make it so that this meeting is open to the public. It's all pretty straightforward there in the name. We've got a few rules that we'll need to follow, um, but that a lot of that too is like, we've got an agenda and we post the agenda. That's not actually required by state law, but we try to do that to stay, you know, provide the best public opportunity to provide input that we can. And, you know, the public generally requests uh, an agenda from us as well, and it helps all of us on the board make sure we know what's going on. And usually the idea is if we've got an agenda, then that's what we need to discuss at that meeting. We can try to add things to the agenda. You'll notice in your bylaws, we've set up a procedure to do that as well. But nor that takes like a two thirds majority, not a regular majority, because we try to stick to the agenda because that's what the public expects to hear. And then we can add things as we go on. Another big thing under the Open Meetings Act is serial communications, like we were kind of talking about before. That, that's the language we use for where do we draw the line when we're talking with another board member? When does it become a meeting? Because the big issue is we want all of our meetings to be open. A meeting is not only the official four to six time on the third Tuesday of the month that we have it set up for. A meeting could also be if we've got a majority of the board talking on one email chain. That is enough people who participate who are a member of the board that you could take action. Because a quorum is present on the email chain, a majority of you could theoretically vote on an issue and take action there. And then beyond that, right, if we're all kind of discussing, not in secret, but at least having a conversation outside of the normal publicly scheduled meeting time, it might have the appearance of impropriety, the appearance of an issue of, this kind of backdoor dealing. And again, it helps to really talk things through with people outside of the meeting context, but we want to avoid it becoming a functionally a meeting. So some tips on that. As I mentioned before, don't reply all to emails. If you've got specific questions, try to reach out to maybe Jesse or Troy or myself, um, and then we can try to talk about it that way. If you'd like to talk to another board member about an issue, please feel free to do so, but also think about like, Am I going to talk to more people on the board? Am I talking to that person to try to collect information, which is cool? Like, that's a good thing to do. Am I trying to talk to them, though, to try to persuade them onto my side, not at the meeting? And that's a little iffier. That kind of gets into the issue of this kind of backdoor dealing idea. So, again, I'll kind of send along some of these rules, but the idea is really try to save a lot of your conversations on actual actions that might be taken by the board for the meeting. And then I'll just keep saying this because it's the main thing that comes up. Please do not reply all, <laughs> if at all possible, um, to avoid that kind of meeting potential. Normally, too, the, it's not the biggest deal. And there are ways to remedy the situation, I should say. If we do have an open meetings violation, perhaps we would need to vote again at a meeting that was properly noticed, something like that. So as with the ethics concerns, please just let me or someone else know as soon as possible if you think there is an issue. 
Another place this does come up as well is if we start talking on maybe something posted um, by McDonald Golf Course on social media or by the park department, and a bunch of people on the board start talking on that comment thread. We want to kind of avoid that as well because we could get maybe six of y'all on one in one spot talking about an issue that could be voted on under the authority and power of the board. So just try to keep it narrow when we're talking to board members outside of board members, kind of to the last sort of, I think, aspect of your question. Um, you can talk to whoever. Uh, the issue that we're trying to avoid is having board members talk to each other in a way that represents a meeting. So if you're talking to staff or other people, we're not, we're not concerned with that anymore. So we'd obviously need to collect as much information as we possibly can. Um, so we've got kind of agenda stuff, notice of meetings. The last thing I'll mention is maybe you've seen in council meetings, um, other boards that you've participated on, um, executive session. Executive session is something that will come up more on city council. It's for things like personnel issues, which we don't really talk about here. Um, that's not really within our context. But if we do have issues, and I'm not just, I'm not going to go into the millions of qualifications that might bring up executive session because it won't happen much here. But there might be sensitive issues that come up that I'm going to keep an eye on where we might have to do an executive session where basically we break out and have a conversation and then come back to discuss things with the public. That is also covered by open meetings, so there might be some issues like that that come up. Um, I know that was a ton of information. I'll try to collect it in one place, make the changes to the bylaws that I've kind of seen discussed here and everything so we can vote on it at the next meeting. Um, I'll be the legal staff uh, present uh, at most or all of the meetings as well, so please feel free to reach out to me with any questions. And again, thank you so much, everybody, for helping us get this off the ground. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Nate. Um, the next um, item on the agenda is we're going to do an update for each course. I've uh, asked staff to be present. I want to thank staff for being here. Um, we have all of our head golf professionals and all of our superintendents except for Darren Dorman from Sam. He is sick today. Um, he is not feeling well at all. So he notified me he will not be here. So we'll we'll try to cover his part. But uh, we just want to give you a little bit of information from each course from staff to kind of know what they've what what's going on and what some of the things they're working on. So um, we're going to start with Auburn Hills. So I'll ask Scott Weller and uh, Ron Moser to come up. Good. Okay, um, brief introduction. My name is Scott Weller. My name is Scott Weller. I'm the golf professional at Auburn Hills Golf Course. Joining me this afternoon will be Ron Mosier, our golf course superintendent. Jesse had asked us to put together a little presentation as far as, you know, what we're doing during our downtime. Well, the way Ron and I see it and, and all of my peers and Ron's peers, there really isn't a downtime. We take these we take these days where we don't have much play and we're prepping and, and getting ready for the the upcoming season. Um, for us in the golf shop, I mean, we've got a lot of plans. We've got a lot of moving parts getting ready for the 2023 season. Um, for those of you that haven't been to Auburn Hills recently, um, under Jesse and Kevin, we've done some major renovations, improvements. I wouldn't say renovations. <laughs> Excuse me, to the clubhouse in preparation for what we think is going to be even a better year in 2023. So as we lead into the 2023, we're, we're going to do some things inside the clubhouse and this, and, and a good majority of this will be done by the staff in-house. Uh, we're going to paint the interior of the clubhouse again. Um, while it doesn't look too awful bad after seven years of wear and tear, there's some areas that 
that needs some updating. Going to install a new countertop in the golf shop. For those of you that haven't been there, have been there. The countertops are original. They are 22 years old, and Formica doesn't last 22 years. So we're down to pretty much the, the wood. A couple other things we're looking at, extend the exterior and interior wall in the golf shop. As we do every year, deep cleaning of the entire clubhouse, both inside, upstairs and down. Um, also want to shampoo the carpets, um, golf shop, food and beverage, and that meeting room. For those of you that don't know much about the operations on Wednesdays, the Parks and Recreation uses our facility for yoga classes, the back room. So if we don't clean that carpet periodically, those ladies and gentlemen that use that back room for yoga have to pretty much get down on the floor. In the, so we do try to keep that um, side of the operation clean as well. Um, cart maintenance, um, something that's vital to making sure that these carts that are pretty much run to death every year. Um, we have an in-house mechanic named Lee Hersey that takes care of the carts at Tex, Sim, and Auburn. So he's got about 210 carts to change oil and filters and repairs that, that are needed to get us ready for the 2023 season. So that keeps Lee pretty busy over the over the winter months. In addition to that, we also need to start kind of preparing us up for 2023 while we have a couple months off. Um, it's, it's dire that we get some staff in place for the upcoming season, you know, golf shop, f &B, and outside service. I mean, the turnover has been pretty, pretty heavy over the years in some areas, and uh, Auburn is no different. Um, our probably the primary focus for, at least for Auburn, will be with – of the upgrades and things that are happening in the clubhouse will be the F and B area. And I'm going to be relying heavily on Kevin to make sure that we get the right staff, the proper staff in place for what he's got in store for us in 2023, which I'm excited about. Um, also for 2023, every facility has been putting to compiling a, a list of volunteers that are um, willing to give us time for starters and marshals, which I think will be a huge benefit for us, you know, giving us eyes out on the golf course and making sure that the standards that we want are actually being conducted on the golf course. Um, last but not least, um, and this is more of a maintenance thing, but it started from the inside. With the rounds that Auburn has endured over the last three seasons, our golf course wasn't designed for 43,000 rounds. Most people don't understand it or don't don't see it, but our tee boxes are just pretty much getting worn to to nothing. So I've been in discussions with Central Links to see what we can do to combo tees up. And what I mean by combo tees up is majority of our players are seniors, senior members, senior play, and ladies. Well, when 50% of your players are seniors, they're wearing out those tee boxes the fastest. So what we're contemplating or in discussions with is consolidating the red and gold and maybe some blue and white throughout the golf course, but I haven't got the details as how that impacts our course rating, which was just done last fall. But again, this will take us down from six T markers back down to five. And one of those five is actually the silver tees or the family forward tees that's in the fairway. So from that standpoint, that's something that's going to be minor, but in the on the grand scheme, when it comes to our turf conditions moving forward in 2023, I think it's going to be, um, we just need to see how it impacts horse rating, you know, and maybe get some feedback from our players. I know most of them, I mean, when you're talking about red and gold and hairy, I what I'm talking about because you're in the senior league, there's not that much difference between the gold and the red. It just provides us a little bit better turf conditions throughout the course of the year. I'll let you take it. Oh. You brought it up to me. I did. <laughs> uh, basically, this is the time of year that we try to get caught up on all the equipment that was failing towards the end of the year, and we got to restart and sharpen the reels and, and everything like that. So we try to squeeze that into this three-month period uh, with the short staff that we do have. Um, here towards the end of last year, our pump that fills our irrigation pond 
had some problems, uh, electrical problems. So we're having to pull the motor. Uh, I don't know if it was a lightning hit or what, but it fried a lot of wire. Uh, but that we're look, we're hoping it's going to be around the twenty thousand. Um, probably wouldn't get up to forty unless we find a whole lot more. I'm hoping it'll be around. Um, we're constantly working on the irrigation repairs. It's twenty four years old now, so there's a lot of stuff. The heads need raised. The, uh, there's blowouts here and there that we need to get on top of. We've been working on some bunkers, trying to get more sand in some of those bunkers. Over the years, they've kind of blown out or just got scooped out with all the golfers. But uh, we're just trying to get more sand in those as we go along and redefine the edges the way they were. Uh, also, we've been doing a lot of tree trimming, pushing back all the volunteer trees we've had to show up and trying to get those cut out and get back to the way we were when we opened. Um, Scott and I have been talking about the driving range, whether we're going to put the concrete slab in there or not, and with what we can do with that to put temporary tees on the driving range when we're either overseeding or during the winter months that we can take that, that grass and put them on temporary tees or the mats back there on the very back like McDonald has. Um, and you, you'd come up with this cost here for 17.5 or 20, so. Pretty much, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff we're doing there in the winter months, what we can do. Uh, our biggest thing, like I said, is shorthanded. Uh, there's only three of us to get everything done. And then when the days are nice and we need to be out mowing or rolling or raking bunkers, it's taking us away from doing all this other work that we got to get done before March. And y'all know it'll be here pretty soon. But keep after it. Any questions? Question. If you're going to put some uh, artificial tees back on the back side of that, what are you looking at in mats? I put the places where you have to use a wood tee to try to jam it into a mat, which doesn't support it, uh, versus the ones that have rubber tee. And then you run into areas where you don't have the right size of rubber tee. I know there's various sizes you can get. Are we taking that into consideration here? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I would, I would only go with a mat that has multiple T locations, so you can turn the mat so it's not wore out constantly in one spot. I don't want to where you put the actual T in it. Those are disasters. We would have rubber mats, and we would, those rubber T's are extremely inexpensive, so we would have multiple size rubber T's available. You probably, you know, there's always theft with that type of thing. Um, that's a, that's an issue. But they are the lucky part is they are extremely inexpensive, so. Okay, when you talk about mats, I'm not advocating that at all. We're talking about synthetic tees with the holes in them where you can rotate them then. Right, that's okay. a, it's a uh, four, by four, by five by five, four by yeah, four. they're like five, five by five. Yeah, and you can rotate. So you get a wear pattern, you rotate it. So we would do have regular rotation on those mats so they're not getting worn out, they last a lot longer. Yeah, so it's the artificial tee where you can actually hit an iron off the floor. Yeah. Okay, all right. yes, sir. And that's a that's something we're tossing around. We haven't. Yeah, I mean, sure yeah, that's something we'd like to get you stuff while we're here. So and again, feedback or input from you guys would is critical to you know us advancing. I mean, the reason for you know even thinking about the the range tea is you know during the winter and during frost delays that that tea takes an absolute pounding, whether it's my tea or at at tech. So. We can take a little bit of wear and tear during the off season and provide more grass for the, the players and the, the range performance <laughs> during the season. I think it benefits everybody. Um, I know that we've had it kind of marked out, and I think 12 to 15 different mats. I mean, that might be a little bit too extreme, but you know, if you're going to endure that cost of putting mats in, you might as well do it all at once instead of piecemeal at four here, six here, seven there. And, you know, on that topic with the mats, we're going to be in Florida at the PGA show. So we'll actually, you know, take a look at some different options. Maybe get some price price points or some price cuts, discounts based on the purchasing at that point. Okay. Um, so what what do we do during the off season in the golf shop? Well, there's only two. Yeah, so this is something that I we were able to do last year and talking with Mr. Hoffman, he allowed me to take take the opportunity and 
changes. So this is what the golf shop looked like for the first 22, 21 years. Old fixtures, outdated, um, unattractive, and didn't help for merchandising or displaying. So this is what it looked like in probably January or February. Clunky fixtures, and I want you to notice these fixtures because you're going to see them again. Take them out. And this is what we have done since. We've implemented or installed slot wall, which allows you to visualize or give a better displaying area for your merchandise, which hopefully in turn adds to more sales, but it certainly makes it look a lot better. So this was actually this year, right around the holidays with the collegiate, and then this is the front foyer. For those of you that were in attendance, and I know that there were a few of you, um, I know Jesse was there, Randy was there, you were there. We had a, I just had an idea in late middle of November, and I passed it on to Kevin about coming up with you know, something different. Let's promote some of the food choices or the food items that we're gonna have on the menu and let's do something for the holidays. So as it would be, we determined a date um, to host this thing. We had, I'd say at one point in time, we had over 200, oh, Steve was there too. Over 200 people in that, in that clubhouse. So the week before, week prior to, the city had had something down in Astor Park in this, this front foyer, which turned out pretty dang good. Actually, was on behalf of the parks, loaning that to us to actually help us present that. So thank you for the parks for, for that. So the fixtures that came out of the golf shop, what did we do with them? We didn't throw them away. So we moved them into the, go into the, into the food and beverage area and used them as cabinets when we installed the big screen TVs. So you got the before and then, then the after. And these are the new tables and high top tables and chairs that were in, what, mid-December, November? I mean, November, so. And then last but not least, something that we've been in desperate need of for years, are carts that actually move around the golf course that go more than a half a mile an hour and don't need, don't require patrons pushing it up the little bunny hills that we have in the, on the golf course. So um, that's all I have. We're just kind of looking forward to the 2023 season um, tournament campaign that we have for outings and events is, Again, on a on a on a good swing, and hopefully we'll retain about oh, eighty or ninety percent of what we had in twenty twenty two. So, any questions? All right. Uh, next up, we're we got an update. Um, Colin is here to uh, give us an update on Sim. Now, uh, Colin has been in Bermuda and he's been all over the place the last week. So he does not have a presentation. Uh, we'll, we'll let him slide on that. Um, and then Darren, the superintendent there, he is, as I said, he's sick. So I'll kind of make we have, uh, but Colin, if you want to come up. Sure. For those of you who don't know, I'm Colin O'Brien, the PGA professional at Arthur B. Sim. Oh, there's Marsh. And uh, we've been getting ready for 2023 20, as well at Sim. We've do, been doing lots of cleaning and um, pre booking stuff for the pro shop for next year and um, just all the things that it takes to get ready for the next season. Um, also, been fixing a lot of stuff that um, need fixed around in the pro shop and uh, um, a lot of urinals that needed fixed and um, replaced the condensation lines um, that we'd been having trouble with all year and uh, just getting stuff that um, we haven't had time to get done or that didn't get done right properly like the condensation lines they uh, did it correctly and finally got it working right so um, just trying to get everything so it's in good shape for 2023 and um, we're also going to be renovating the clubhouse a little bit. Um, we're going to be putting in, uh, we're going to have all new paint, new flooring, and uh, new uh, countertops. The old ones are going to go away, so it's going to provide a fresh new look for 2023. 
And um, I know Darren wanted to be here, but uh, I've been sick a little bit this winter too, and he's uh, sick right now, so I feel for him on that. But uh, if he was here, he would definitely want to tell you that um, that Sim is going to see a big increase in rounds in 2023, mainly because of better course conditions. Uh, for those of you that don't know, we did go a, about a year without a superintendent. And um, when uh, at the start of 2022, uh, even though the course conditions weren't um, weren't horrible, they weren't weren't to the level that uh, everyone is used to seeing Arthur B. Sim looking. And uh, Aaron wanted me to let you guys know that um, to expect those course conditions to be really good in 2023. And I think that'll help us with uh, with rounds as well. And uh, everyone will enjoy their experience a lot more. And uh, that's what pretty much all I have for you today. Uh, I wanted to mention one more thing about uh, Darren, the superintendent started, uh, I think it was like three weeks after I did. We, I think I started in June. He started around the 1st of July, I believe. Uh, so he came in, as Colin said, when there has had not been a superintendent in place for, for several months. And um, Neil White, he, he kind of took over the assistant and he, he did everything he could by himself. Um, but um, Darren came in and took over that. So the first few months, it's basically him putting that plan together, to prioritize what needs to be done. Uh, he and I talk a lot about SIM, the things that need to happen. And I, as he said, we, I, we all expect really good things. I'm, I've been real impressed with Darren and uh, I think he just needs that that full season to really get that course back to where it needs to be. So, um, yeah, as Colin said, I think next year you're going to see a lot of improvements at, at SIM. Um, any questions for, for SIM? i got some questions. Yeah. This, I've looked at this list of uh, things going on and trying to enhance the every facility, but nowhere on here do I ever see any irrigation repairs. Is that being scheduled for out, uh, that is a long term uh, budgetary or what? Yeah, that's a, a topic that we're going to get into real quick with this board. Um, that's something our irrigation systems are old. We're constantly having to repair them and fight with them. Um, those are, that's a major, major expense. So, um, you know, like tonight, we're dumping information on you. Um, as we get into the, the next meeting, we're going to start really diving into these these topics. And irrigation is at the top of that list. So let's just say we're going to hold all those questions for later on because I got some questions on the ponds at McDonald Park. I got some, you know. As they come up, the, the cows for Mac are going to come up here. You can ask them. Look, I can try to answer anything, so feel free. I mean, to, to answer that specific question, yes, that's something we are going to get into. We're going to have to, it's going to take a heck of a plan to, to figure that out because it's a huge expense. So basically, then we're probably in, in lieu of this, we're looking at more capital outlay types of a scenario on that then. For, for a full irrigation, that, that would, yeah, it would have to be almost. We're looking at over a million dollars per course for that. That's correct. The only reason I thought about that is because Sam's had severe problems on valving over there, and they have multiple areas that were not getting irrigated because of that, which is part of the detraction from the golf course. I know it was never designed to irrigate the whole golf course, so. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. There you can't change the roughs over there because this wasn't designed for that. So. And right. I don't think they can ever design for it with the water allocations. I don't know how you guys did on your allocations this year. There's a lot of places that were pushing the envelope. Pretty it, bad. it was a very dry year. It was a challenge for sure. Uh, but yeah, the SIM is probably the worst of our irrigation um, our irrigation systems. So it, it would probably be at the top of the list. Um, but they're all old. They're all, it's something we're going to have to figure out moving forward. And it's, Unfortunately, we don't have probably a lot of time to figure that out because they're going to start having more and more problems of every every day. So, absolutely. Okay. Anything else for Sim? All right. Thank you, Colin. Appreciate it. All right. Next up, uh, we've got a McDonald Golf Course update. That's Keith and Ron. If you guys want to come up. Uh, my name is Keith Gunter, the uh, golf professional at Mac. Ron here takes care of everything outside. Um, 
to give you a heads up, I'm short timer. Uh, <laughs> I'll be leaving the city in February, so. There's not a lot of 2023 planning on my part being done right now because we are. Probably more than likely going to be getting a total remodel of the clubhouse, so there's not been a lot of pre booking on my part for merchandise just due to that fact and the fact that I am. short time. But what we have here are some of the upgrades. I'll let Ron get into that that. We've done on the course. And they've they've worked out pretty darn well as far as attention. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Ron Reese. Uh, how do you click the next picture here? OK, uh, this year we had uh, this is just a picture of the overflow on number nine, which is our main irrigation lake. Uh, about this year, uh, if you played out at Mac over the last few years, you'll know that the retention lakes had deteriorated the uh, dams and overflow structures where we were not able to retain rainwater that we can use for irrigation or as much rainwater, I should say. Uh, this year, you know, we weren't going to retain any water this year anyway because it didn't ever rain until November. But uh, luckily, you know, we saw just with one rainfall how those lakes filled up and can hold water like they should. Uh, number nine is the lake that gets pumped out of just that, just that weir wall being redone and, and fixed the way it should be. That lake, you can look at the shore on the other side. When that was full, that would be about a foot lower than that. Just with the size of that lake, that's about 700,000 gallons of water we weren't retaining. Uh, so if you can figure like right now when we're buying city water, uh, this year the price is going to be up over $7 per 1,000 gallons of water. So uh, every, every bit makes a difference. Uh, the ponds on 18 and 11 and 12 also retain water for, uh, for uh, irrigation purposes. Uh, also, number six, the weir wall, or the, the one in weir wall, but an overflow structure, it was redone. So that lake holds water now. Uh, part of the probably the next thing we'll consider, and actually I'm waiting on some information from a company out of Kansas City that does lake dredging, be to come in and uh, dredge the upper end towards the north. Those lakes are sealed in as they were meant to be. And uh, looking at dredging those out, also part of the irrigation lake. Uh, dredging it because it has had a lot of silt, some silt filled in, so it would uh, pot, it would uh, also increase the uh, amount we can hold there. Uh, we're also looking at we worked with stormwater and we've had a, a preliminary meeting with uh, with uh, engineers to look at also building another lake on the golf course uh, would be between holes 10 and 18, that whole area, that creek line would become another lake that would more than double our water holding capacity on the golf course. So that's uh, something for many years would be a very important thing for us to do. Uh, this year also part of the project, there were new bridges on holes uh, 6 and 17, kind of lose that old uh, flappity flap Clunkety clunk as you're driving across there. If you're used to that sound of the boards flopping, uh, you no longer get that. So, also the bridge on number 12, it was redone to where bridge on 12 was also part of the overflow structure of a pond. And because that had failed, the uh, you know the, the that pond would also also not hold water. So, uh, so that was uh, had to be done because that bridge was unable to be used for car traffic for about two and a half years so that was done uh something that jesse and i we talked about first time in uh you're we've been doing some bunker renovation on our own our bunkers were very poorly uh, constructed i guess would be the best way to say it we've gone in and redone some drainage and and uh we've got some some of the bunkers now, every one we've worked on, they drain like they should. But as you know, if you play out there, it 
you know, we get an inch and a half of rain, which is great, but then we have to have a couple of guys spending a couple of days pumping bunkers out and then pushing the sand back up and re-raking. So after a good rainfall, which is good to have, our sand traps are very poor condition for for a few days. And what's bad, it always seems like it happens on Friday and there's just ponds for the weekend. So uh, we've looked at, there's a couple different methods we'll look at. Uh, one is capillary concrete. One is called a billy bunker system. Won't get into a lot of details, but uh, you know we're looking at you know ten to twelve thousand dollars per sand trap. Uh, we've got sixty sand traps. I mentioned to Jesse. Uh, a lot of these sand traps, if you play McDonald, they really don't come into play. Uh, we could easily cut out two third or a third of the sand traps easily, if not more. I would suggest. Uh, would be part of a master plan. Uh, you know, we need to look at having, a, you know, maybe not doing a full scale remodel, but uh, solicit a golf course architect to come in and kind of help with that. And, uh, you know, some of them, if they were rebuilt, uh, you know, they could be reshaped where they're easier to maintain. Uh, last time they were done, a lot of them have the high flash ups that are. You know, every time it rains, the sand washes down. I would prefer a slope down to the sand and sand in the bottom. It's just a lot easier to maintain. So that's something that would have to be uh, talked about and considered in a long range. Uh, I don't know why this picture got put in here other than the picture that they had. So this is this is what McDonald looks like when we're getting good cooperating weather and rainfall. So. Uh, you know, I'm talking about, and the main thing with McDonald is, uh, you know, this year I haven't seen the final numbers, but Jesse, I think it was close to two hundred thousand dollars we spent buying city water. And sometimes golfers ask me, part of the city, how come you have to pay for water? I said, well, that's the way it is. You know, so uh, who knows? I would uh, something I'm going to throw out right now. Doesn't have to be discussed because I guess it'd have to be an agenda item, but I don't know why we can't buy water at cost from the city. Why do we pay full retail for part of the city? You know, so there's, I'm sure you, there's reasons for that. And I could answer that question for you. Yeah. The meeting. Okay. And I know one of the meetings is because the water department is the enterprise fund also. So they're, they're a business of making money for the water department. So. Uh, they don't want to give anybody a cut. So anyway, that's a very important thing that affects McDonald is, uh, for instance, I know Seth with his two wells, he's able to pump, if he wants to, 90 million gallons of water a year. You know, so if we're using in a dry year, we might use 40 million gallons of McDonald and more than half of that we're having to buy. So you can see the... Uh, the challenge McDonald Golf Course has from a watering standpoint. Uh, and going into the future, I've mentioned a long range plan. I think that has to be done. Uh, everything can't happen at once. Uh, Keith mentioned he's retiring in February. Uh, my wife had let me, I might too, but, but uh, I, I don't have that much more time. And uh, the thing that's sad to me about that is we've put up with a lot of I'll say it easily crap over the last few years the golf division has. And uh, I think it's, you know, there's a very bright future now. And I'm going to be part of that for a while. And who knows, I may uh, may not retire when I maybe I'm planning to. So I do actually really love coming to work. There's been times that hasn't happened. So uh, main thing is you on this board committee, whatever you decide to call it, uh, I ask you to make sure you consider to help us do what we need to do because we all want to make golf great. So that's all I've got to say. If anyone's got any questions, as usual, yeah, <laughs> one of the most expensive things from a labor standpoint, yes, to maintain for everybody's information. <clears throat> the ones that you guys look at and choose if you choose to close some up. Are you going to be able to drain that or are you just going to create another water hole? Well, that's that would have to be part of having an architect decide. Yeah, I mean, obviously you can't, can't. And the bad thing is the way some of them were built, 
There's one, say from elevation standpoint, this bunker is a little higher next to the green. It's draining into the next bunker. You know, so it's it's not as easy as just saying, okay, let's do away with that one. Because yeah. there's going to be some physical things that are going to affect how things are going to have to be done. I agree with that. That's why I want to make sure if you close some of them up that they're able to drain and you just don't have to right. create another problem. On the right, side. yeah. Did want to follow up to if you guys have any questions over what's going on with Common Clubhouse, SC and Kevin probably be presenting. Oh yeah, some of that tonight since yeah. kind of asked the picture. And one more thing I want to mention. Uh, talked with my assistant about this. Our main one of our probably main focuses for 2023 is. Uh, I really want to focus this fall. We did a lot of overseeding in the rough. Weather wasn't cooperative. Uh, some of the seed came up. It'll still come up in the spring, but I really want to focus on uh, encouraging or ever what you want to say, maybe and probably even doing some seeding of Bermuda into the rough, just for the fact that uh, having the cool season grass with, uh, you know, there's times we're watering to try to water the rough. So the fescue looks good when the Bermuda and the fairway really doesn't need as much water. So um, that's going to be one of my focuses, promote Bermuda grass in the rough. Uh, so it's we have a more consistent turf or places where it's, you know, where it's really thin and wear and tear. And, and uh, we did have about 100 trees removed this fall that were dead that needed to come out earlier in the year. And a lot of those were in areas that, uh, you know, there's been a period that, uh, you know, some places where there was just a lot of trees where there's more trees planted than needed to be. And the trees created too much shade, uh, take too much water out of the, out of the ground that the grass didn't have a chance to get. So, uh, some of that was some tree thinning that's been helped. So. That's going to be my main focus is the fairway. We have some fairway who <laughs> get sodded in this spring. <clears throat> Excuse me, but uh, mainly is uh, in the rough. So, I mean, when we're getting good, normal rainfall, we're really healthy in the rough. And and when we're not, it can get really ugly. That's it. Not any more questions. I'll. All righty. Thank you. I did have one question. Well, so in some of the rough, there's a couple of holes that uh, I've lost several balls in trying to find them. Are you planning on filling those holes in? Uh, I don't. Yes, I and I don't know what you ball mean. Number eight is one spot. There's a couple of holes on the right side of the fairway. OK, it's in the rough, of course. Talking about trip hazards. Yeah. 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 OK, yeah. And there's probably some areas that have maybe been from past irrigation repairs mm -hmm. or something. And there's low spots that need to be filled in or like that. Yeah, but you're OK. Yeah. Thank you, guys. And on your ball in your group. Yeah. I don't see that. I'd like to make a quick point just based on what you just said. Yeah. Based on what you just said, if you guys have little things that you see, please send them to me. Little things like quick fixes, you know, a hole, whatever. Send them to me so we can start taking these little details and knocking these things out. So anything like that, please send it to me so we can we can make sure we're aware of these these things. Okay, last but not least, uh, Tex Consolver. Got Seth, they're here. Pull up their presentation. Um, first off, my name is Steve Blasky, golf professional at Tex Consolver Golf Course. Been there for 10 years. I'm basically just going to give you a little history about Tex Consolver. I don't know if everybody's familiar with it. Um, basically, we are and have been um, historically the busiest course in the city. Last two years, we've been over 50,000 rounds 
um, at our golf course. Mainly thanks to Seth. The course conditions are always exceptional. Um, I've been very lucky in finding staff with good customer service. So we present a lot of reasons for people to come back. Um, we have been very successful the last couple of years. COVID has helped us out. Um, it's also come with this challenge. Uh, 2022 generated 1.1 million in revenue. Um, that would be from uh, green fees, carts, food and beverage, and driving range. That doesn't take an effect in membership revenue. Um, also, uh, with within that, um, we we see opportunity for that to even grow. Um, I'm not sure rounds wise if we can continue to keep stuff and more people out there. I mean, most days we're running. Uh, close to 300 players. We stay busy. Um, it's a very easy golf course to play. Seth does a great job again with course conditions with all those rounds because that presents its challenges also. Um, golf instruction player development. Uh, last year we did about a thousand lessons. So that includes all of our junior golf programming, hook a kid on golf, snag, clinics, uh, private lessons and also our PGA Junior League, which that's a picture of our team that goes around and plays other area courses. Um, again, the youth is our future. Um, we take great pride in our programming, um, making sure that we keep the kids out there. Uh, and that doesn't take into effect that the first tee also uses our facility for their uh, lessons, as well as McDonald and TGA also runs a junior camp out there through the summer. Um, our outside events in 2022 we ran 22 outside tournaments. Now that did include uh, high school events, corporate uh, tournaments, fundraisers, um, also some of our in-house tournaments we ran, which was our text turmoil, text two man. Uh, all were very successful, completely filled up, um, had no problem with that. And we have about 10 leagues that call tech corporate leagues that come out to our place throughout throughout the year. Um, our snack bar also was very successful with that many rounds, um, and we even have more room to grow there. We did about 150,000 in sales this year. Again, we're pretty limited on what we can offer based on our kitchen, but going to be some changes to that coming up. Um, we are going to have some sort of remodel this year. We're going to get uh, paint, get everything inside, kind of a little bit of updating to our facility, um, just to make it more of a it's pretty dated right now, to be honest. So it, uh, it it could look a lot better, and it will. So we're excited for that. Um, also offer my pro shop, full service pro shop, club repair, club fitting, to about ninety five thousand dollars in sales. Um, soft goods, hard goods, accessories, pretty much anything we can provide for our customers, we try to carry. Again, this time of year, we're doing a lot of ordering for the spring. Try to make sure we have the products on hand that we need. Um, for our clientele. Uh, my brief, I know Seth has several things. I'll turn it over to Seth for his projects. Hey, thank you. All right, well, uh, I'm just going to talk about some of our projects we did in 2022, and then some of the ones we've got planned for this coming year. So uh, we did work on our irrigation system. So we rebuilt rebuilt the pedestals, which is just the concrete base that you can see is in pretty bad shape on some of these. We've got two wells out on the course, so we rebuilt those. That's framed those out, and that's the finished product on those. Uh, we did some cart path repair work where we tried to take out some of the back breaking cracks due to tree roots pushing them up. So that's us cutting them out and then that's the finished product on those. Smooth those out. And we got a lot more to do. And you can see the grass around those areas. It's really worn from people trying to avoid them. So hopefully that will help some of our turf as well. And then our uh, big project we did was uh, on nine, we added a lot of uh, rock retaining wall so we got some rock that Mr. Houtman was kind enough to let us use from Honey Prairie Park that was seen out there. And we're able to place that on top of some gravel and build the backside of that to, to build a retaining wall clear around that. And 
see the finished product there. I think it turned out really well. Uh, I think we probably spent ten, fifteen thousand dollars on rock and and sand for it, but I would say it was probably two hundred thousand dollar project that we got done in house. So that was a big one. Um, some of the projects we want to do for twenty-three. We want to get some cart path work done, retaining wall on hole seven. I'm going to go over all this stuff, so let me just get to it. Here it is. Cart path on nine, really bad shape. I think Jesse's going to talk about getting some cart path work done on all the golf courses, but we've got a few places like this where the asphalt's just eaten away. So we want to get some concrete poured in those areas. And then I want to put in another retaining wall, just like we did on nine on hole seven. You can see it's uh, eroding away towards the car path, so it's getting to the point where we need to do something. So, and we've still got some more rock. So until Mr. Altman tells me to stop using that rock, putting it in. Um, then the other thing we like to do is uh, work on full seven T boxes. We've got, you can see. Uh, not the best picture, but a set of smaller tees, and I'd like to add soil, make those one big long tee box, and uh, convert them over to zoysia. And I think that really help. They get beat down a lot, take a lot of abuse. So I think that really help that hole out. And then uh, the last thing we need to do is this year we're going to try to get a bunch of trees planted. We removed a hundred or so trees last year. And I'd like to get a bunch of those replaced and add some in some new spots. That's why they were dead trees. Dead trees. Dead trees. Yes, correct. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but that's all I have. Mike, do you have any questions for me? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Doing your water this year because I know Pawnee or, yeah, Pawnee or Tex, I'm sorry. Uh, doesn't catch any rainwater per se because you guys have to fill your own. Right. You hold your own in this weather that we have in your allocation. Yeah, we've converted all of our fairways from cool season to yeah. Bermuda, so we were able to sell, stay way twenty, probably twenty million under our allocation this year. I'm such a problem this year around the city in a lot of areas. I'm just curious. I had one other question. I get a lot of guys that I play with. They ask, how come the tees were the runway tees, which is when they built Pawnee or X, uh in the 60s, that was uh, kind of the way they did things in those days architecturally. And they ask, how come we don't divide them up? And I was just curious from your estimation, if you were to divide up tees, how much that would cost you in labor to do that? <laughs> uh. I think that would cost you money. It would cost us a lot of money. Instead of sending one guy out to Motis, we had to send out two to stay. Uh, so the best thing to do is just answer it. it, it it's budget, uh, budgetarily impossible to do. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right. So but, uh, next, I'm going to go into the uh, finance from the Browns report. Before I do, I want to again thank staff for being here and, and for the presentations. Uh, I don't know. Give me one second. there okay all right so first i'm going to start with a rounds report basically it's just kind of uh it's something i give to part board and it kind of breaks down um, a lot of a few different categories and how we stack up compared to last year and the previous few years uh, so we'll start with um the, the year to date for the rounds here to date and this is through december through the end of the year uh, we were on track to last year. It was extremely busy. 2021. We were on track to blow that away until November, November 1st. Literally, it started raining. I think 
maybe the day after Halloween. And then it got cold and we had almost zero because of play golf. No, we've been very few days of play golf in the last two months. Um, and last year, November was apparently was really nice looking at the numbers and decent days as well. So we we ended up falling a little bit behind last year, um, but because of those two months, we were about almost 5,000 rounds up going into November, and we ended up with uh, about 3,000 rounds down uh, for the year. But still, if you look historically, you look back at 18, 19, um, we're up over 50,000 rounds, and that was when we had, uh, no, that's just with these courses. So um, rounds not not dissatisfied at all, and as, as Steve said, they're doing 50,000 which is unbelievable on that golf course. Um, looking at just a month, December over December, uh, where again, you can see the difference right there. That's almost 5,000 rounds um, different from, uh, or less than last year, just strictly based on the weather. The few days that we did have in December, the courses were packed, or maybe three days maybe in December, uh, they were absolutely packed. So it's not from people not wanting to get on our courses. We just haven't had the chance. Um, here today, park rental, We've done very well with even with the rounds down, we uh, 1.26 uh, million. This is a little bit up from last year, basically the same. And if we would have had those two months, we would have been up more. Um, I'm going to get in. When we get to the projects. I'm going to talk about golf carts uh, quite a bit in, in a few minutes. Um, food and beverage has been a huge increase, and um, he hasn't been up yet. But we we brought on Kevin Bishop. He's our new food and beverage manager. He came on in July, I believe. Um, and he's going to go over kind of some of his plans. But this is an area that even though we're up a lot, we're up, uh, can't do math, about $150,000 over last year, up 31%. We still think there's a huge um, area of improvement here. So um, we'll continue to increase those numbers. I feel very confident in that. Monthly membership comparison uh, for the year, for, um, I mean, from our peak this year, I think we're 1657, we're 1605. Throughout the year, you have members that drop out and you gain members this time of the year. You don't really, it makes no sense to get a membership when it's going to be cold for the next four months. So um, as we lose people for various reasons, these last two months, we're just not adding the ones back, but I have, a, we're going to do a big push. And I have very confident in the spring that number will go, continue to go up and up. Um, driving range comparison, we're pretty much flat year over year. Last year, a little bit down. Um, this is an area that I really want to it, it's an area that we can improve dramatically with little events. um and it's um it's a very profitable I mean, if you get people out it's it's very profitable um it basically costs the same whether you have people there or not so um we, we can make a lot more revenue there um as someone mentioned we're going to the pga show there's six of us that are going to go to orlando the pga show we have several things that that we were wanting to look at um so if any items that you guys want us to look at, see what exists out there. PGA show, if you're not familiar with it, has everything in the golf business you could ever imagine. I mean, if you're looking at a pull cart, there's 28 different companies that carry pull carts you get to look at. I mean, it's it's overwhelming. So if there's anything at all you guys want us to try to get ideas and see what see what's out there, let us know. Um, but the driving range is a the targets and different things to make the the ranges better and more functional, more, more efficient for people to practice. Um, it was a big goal of mine. Um, and then merchandise comparison, as you can see, we are way up on merchandise, $118,000 up over last year. Um, kind of looking at Auburn Hills alone, did $185,000, $186,000 this year. Um, that is, that, that's that's a big number um, for a course like that. That's he Scott does a great job. Um, and Mac, you know, as as Keith said, he's getting ready to uh, to leave us. So not, there's no reason to overstock his shop right now and get stuck with a ton of stuff. So um, that number, I think, will go up next year. Um, and then Sim, there's a big jump because last year there wasn't really a head pro in there. So we had very, very little merchandise. And, and Collins went in and increased that um, and continues to, to add and add. So uh, merchandise is a big, uh, been a big, uh, we've hit some big numbers. Um, as we look at the number of rounds, we've got a, whatever we said, 170, what was the number? 174,000 rounds. That's 174,000 people walking through our door. So these food and beverage, the, uh, the driving, guys, these are all things. They're coming to play golf. The golf course is our product, without a doubt. But there's all these supplemental areas that if we do it right, the people are going to want to be with us. They're going to want to come into the clubhouse, get something to drink, spend some money on some food there with us instead of going down the street somewhere else and spending money. 
uh, if we do our pro shops offering that merchandise and the things that the people need when they come in, these are the areas that we have to focus on the golf courses. These are the areas as an enterprise fund that we can really make up uh, the, the money and put it back into the golf courses. Um, okay, we go. Any any questions on this? First of all, on the rounds report, before I get into the financials. Okay. So I'll start here. Um, blurry. Hit the plus sign up. Kyle. Makes it a little bit more blurry. Is that better? Okay, that's good. Um, so our financials, this is just a snapshot. I'm going to focus on this um, front page here. This is a snapshot of all of the courses. Keep in mind, this goes through November. So it's January the 4th, I believe, right now. Um, we haven't had time to get everything finalized for the month of December. So at the next meeting, I'll have the full year. Um, but just focusing on revenues, the original budget that was set up for um, 2022, just over $4 million in revenue. That They revised that. Uh, Somewhere around midway through the year to five million, and we ended up at five point one two. Um, that's our actual numbers uh, through November. So uh, we, we we've done. I feel like a, a, we're in a very good place as far as revenue coming in, with the potential of so much uh, so much more as we make these improvements. Um, last year, we at that point we were at four point seven, so quite a bit uh, of an increase there. On the expense side, um, personnel. You can see it, it budgeted. The revised budget was basically 2.5 million. Um, we're our actuals are just over 2 million. So um, now keep in mind, I came in middle of the year. Kevin came on middle of the year. We didn't have a super at, at Sim. So that number looks really good, but it was uh, with the added uh, personnel. We were very short staff. So um, that looks good, but it, we need to we will spend more money than that going forward. Um, on the contractuals, um, budget was 1.8. We ended up at just over a million, uh, so we came in a little under. Uh, we're, we're a little under as of this point. Um, last year we were at 8.16, so we did go up a little bit due to a couple of things. I think the, as you increase business, expenses increase. So as long as we're spending a dollar to make a dollar fifty, that's okay. Um, and then the other thing, obviously, just like everything in the world the cost is going up and up and up so um, that's something that we have to take into consideration as we make these plans going forward uh, materials and supplies 658 budget we can't we're at, at this point we're at 591 um, 67,000 under last year we're at 471 so same the expenses are a little bit up over last year but we've uh, there's, there's reason for that and we've done more projects this year, especially in the second half of the year. Um, overall, just kind of the bottom line there, it's, it's uh, right here. We were budgeted for 1.3 um, net. We ended up just under 2 million, so $660,000 uh, $660, better than, than what was budgeted for in, in the net column, which is, uh, which is obviously very good. Um, so we're in a, we're in a good place. The last few years, there's not really been much money spent because of COVID, because of the management coming, the privatization thing uh, that was going on. So we are in a good place. We've got uh, almost $2 million in our fund right now, but it's we have to start putting that money in. There's a lot of projects that have been in place, but kind of old for various reasons. And we're to a point now it's time to, in my opinion, to move forward some of these things, offer a better product, make sure our clubhouses are up to where they should be. Um, and, and just provide a better overall product for our customers. So um, obviously we don't wanna, I'm not saying we need to just spend all of our money, right now, but we, we do need to move forward on these projects and increase what we offer to the, to the public. So any questions on finance? Yes, sir. Question. Okay. I didn't see anything on the 23 proposed here. I know that had to go through the council in August. No, it, it's, you should have a sheet that says golf on the top left. That is your, that's the budget 23 that has been adopted. It's in place. It should, I don't have a slide. It says golf top left of the page. It may not be, it may be a separate. It's, it's not part of that staple. Yeah. Packet. 
Make sure you do have that if you don't mind. Good. And that's also on the city of Wichita website, all the, the budget for 23 for across the city, and we're part of that. Okay. Any any other questions on financials on any of that? All right. Me. Okay, moving on. The next item on the agenda is the uh, project update. Um, so it's a good time going from the finance into the project. So here's you want to get me going here. I let the, uh, the staff go first because I he kind of kind of brought to my attention. If I go first, I'm a good chance I'm going to steal a lot of their thunder and make them repeat a lot of things. So I let them go first. So. Uh, Okay, and I'm, I'm going to ask Kevin to come up. We've uh, been working on the clubhouse renovation project. Um, this is actually a project that we've been working on. Yeah, pretty much all the, the whole second half of the year, uh, kind of coming up with plans and cost and everything. And uh, we we come up with a budget of eight hundred thousand dollars. We took that to council; they approved that. Um, so, kind of get into what we're what we're looking at here. We'll start with Mac. We're looking at Mac, Sim, and Tex golf course. So starting at Mac, this is a current picture of the inside. Um, it is extremely outdated. I don't think it's changed since the 50s. Uh, I tell us a lot. There's a picture of the pro shop. When you walk in, there's a picture of the pro shop from around 1953, I think is what I was told. It's of the pro shop. So you look at the picture, you look at the pro shop, it's exactly the same. Nothing has changed except for the signs behind the counter. So um, it's in dire need. It's, it's actually amazing that it's even looks the way it does right now. So what we're looking at is here's some renderings that the architects have put together. Um, we're look. Oh, let me grab some. While he's doing that, Keith kind of said he had nothing to do with this, and a lot of this was his idea to flip the pro shop to where the kind of the dining area is and get it all out front, and then we're utilizing the other space, which you won't see in here for. Mine and Jesse's offices are going to be at McDonald's when this is all done. Yep. So you can see first we're the flooring. Um, we're getting away from that old cafeteria tile. We're looking at a luxury vinyl, um, kind of this gray color is, is what we're looking at. And then for the paint schemes, uh, we are looking at the, the primary color and then the accent color. Um, it's we want to keep it where we can kind of basic colors that we can add to it and not going to clash if we try to put different things. So we are not interior designers by any means, but we've had people, a lot of people's input on this and, and I think it's going to look great. But the pictures here, just as he said, right now when you walk in Mac, the pro shop is to your left in that room. We're moving that to the far end of the, what is now the kind of dining area. Um, so the first third of that building would be the pro shop area, move into the um, seating area for food and beverage. Um, and then with the current pro shops or the current pro shop will be converted to our offices um, so we can be at the course and kind of you know being working at city hall is fun but i don't know what's going on out there i need to be at the course so i can talk to people and interact um, and i'm at the courses most of the time anyway but as a perspective for those that know the course robert and I'm here a lot. that's actually the north windows that face the parking lot there is no golf course behind it okay. so the pro shop moves to those north windows They'll be able to see the parking lot, people pulling in from there in the carts where right now at Mac, they can't even see the golf course from the pro shop. They'll be able to see everything. And then the when they did these renderings, they put the tables that are currently in there back in the renderings. We are not going to keep those tables. They are warped bad. So we're going to get more like conference pictures that's got you. Yep. Um, just to kind of hit real quick, kind of the scope of work that we're looking at um new windows new door right now there's a door on each end of the building we're eliminating those doors and putting a double door in the middle of the room so you can pro shop or you can go food and beverage um uh, the hvac system is a mess it no one can i mean people everyone we've had come in and look at that can't figure out what they were thinking um 
And on the interior brush paint, we're going to put a drop ceiling back here. Um, that ceiling right now, it's a small square tile. We're going to put a drop ceiling below that. Um, new lighting, as you can see in that picture. Um, new flooring. Um, the bathrooms are going to be completely redone. At Mac, they are horrible. Um, so they're going to be completely redone. Um, the new pro shop counter, TV throughout. Um, the concession, we're going to kind of redo that area completely as well. And then the electric has to be completely redone through the building. So um, that's one. I, I think, you know, that course, most of you know it was the original Wichita Country Club. It has a ton of history. The the course, the layout of that course is fantastic. And we're just trying to really mac bring it to what it should be at this point. Um, I think that's a... Uh, there's so much room for improvement and for that course to be great. Okay, looking at SIM, we are looking at uh, a smaller version of Mac. So paint, um, new flooring, ripping out the old nasty carpet. Um, we're looking at putting the same luxury vinyl flooring in. Um, polish the concrete floors, clean them up. There's concrete kind of around that we don't want to mess with because it's it's going to be it would turn into a disaster and it looks fine. Um, there's some ceiling damage that we're going to do. Uh, the counter, same situation here we're looking right now. There's a huge L-shaped counter that serves both the food and beverage and then the pro shop. We're going to eliminate that big counter, put one counter for the food and beverage, open up that pro shop area and put the, uh, food, the uh, pro shop counter against the far window. Takes up another six feet of the what will be the pro shop, so it widens the pro shop. Yep. Okay, and then at Tex, it's mostly exterior work there. That that building is in dire need of some uh, some love on the outside. Uh, the some of the boards you can touch them and they just turn to powder. Uh, so we are um, looking at replacing the the fascia boards that I'm talking about. Um, all the doors will be replaced. Um, or repair all the damaged wood columns and all the wood areas. Um, gutters in the areas that need it. Uh, right now, you can tell exactly where the gutters are and where there aren't just by the beams and the wood and the paint. It's just rotted. And, and uh, so we're going to put new gutters to eliminate that damage. Um, kind of go through the list. It's, it's a lot, mainly just completely spruce up the outside. We are looking at lighting on the inside. Um, Trying to get rid of 1970, yep. which is what Sim looks like. Tex looks like more. Yeah. I'm 1970. <laughs> All right. I was there. Uh, yes, sir. The old days that uh, I don't know if if Tex still has the same problem. I don't know. I might be able to answer that. There's getting to be a, a real bad problem. Clubhouse going to the tank system out there on their septic tanks and what have you. Has that been looked at or is that cured or what? I haven't had any issues with it. I uh, haven't smelled anything. No. Yeah. Since I've been here, no one's brought that to my attention. That's a good thing. Well, it was an ongoing problem for a long time. It's a problem. I didn't know whether it actually cured it up or not. So oh. Obviously, it must have. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> Art staging when they did all that concrete work, they dug all that out. Okay, uh, that, oh, there you go. Okay, so, all right. All right, so the next thing I have on this, I think Scott mentioned it earlier volunteer program for starters and marshals. This is, uh, I mean, it, horses use it throughout the country. I've used it everywhere I've been. Uh, right now, there's no control. Once the, the customers check in at the pro shop, it's the wild west on the golf courses, and that we're stuck in these pro shops, can't get out there to see what's going on. Um, so, we're we've I've got uh, to do a count today. I would say between 50 and 60 right now volunteers um, that have already signed up and we'll do a big push uh, probably in February. Um, but to put starters and marshal at each course at least starting out at least during the busy times of the day which are all the time um, during the summer right now which is great but um, just to have that control make sure people are being paired up on the first tee it's not just force them single double force them you know it's just a it's it's a problem right now. Um, and just make sure everything's going smooth and the customer are having the best experience possible. This is at no no cost to us. It's all volunteers. So I'm um, really excited to get that into place. That's one of the, and pace of play. That's one of the biggest complaints, obviously. So we'll be able to track. They'll check them in with an iPad. 
as soon as someone tees off, they'll know they'll be able to track their turn times, track the round. They'll know the marshal can look and say, you started at 12 o'clock, it's 2.30 and you're on number seven. Like you're on a pace for a six hour round. If you know, they'll know to kind of get them emotion. And there'll be a full training with all um, volunteers before we uh, get them out on the courses. All right. On that. I'm sorry. That's been tried before. And so my question would be, the problem was we got a lot of volunteers, blah, blah, blah. But this guy only wanted to work two hours this week and then play golf every day. And this, so what's the compensation going to be in terms of all? Are you actually hiring an employee or are they going to put some kind of a minimum of hours? Yeah, it'll be for every shift that you work, you're going to earn. I'm, I'm working on putting that specifically together on and I'll bring that to you guys. But whether I mean, it could be a member that gets cart rentals, it could be a non member that gets playing privilege, but it's not just you work two hours, you get free golf seven days a week anywhere you want to go. It'll be a um, it's basically like a compensation with golf instead of with with pay, obviously. Okay, and I know earlier you'd mentioned you're looking at the procedures, manuals, et cetera. I don't know when it was last revised, but uh, since the advent of your new, uh, yes, season tickets for seniors and a lot of that, it Remember. seems like there's a whole lot of wantsums going off all of a sudden right. because That's they right. can just trot out there and play. Yeah. Uh, is so, that going to be then addressing your new procedure manual where these guys got a right to pair them up? That's going to be a vital part of, of okay. the policy. That's a huge, huge problem. Absolutely. Yep. And that for sure I'll have for you guys before the next meeting so we can review it and put it in place. But everything I'm kind of doing right now, I'm looking to have in place by spring as far as the policies and the, and the plan and that stuff. So uh, I'll, I'll have all that to you to review and then we can... We can put it in place. Uh, the next topic is something I think is at the top of the list, and I, I kind of want to go over a plan. It's new golf carts. Our golf carts at Mac right now, if they have 100 people on the tee sheet, they're out of carts, and it's a the carts are breaking down. We're pulling five, six, eight, ten carts a day off the course that are broken down for various reasons. Some of them are what key 2011 golf carts, 12, which. 10 years old, okay, but you look at how much golf we've had over the last three years, those co those cards, they're 10 years, but they've got the usage of 15 years on them, so they are wore out. So what I um, really wanted to do is get on a lease. Um, we, we own the carts right now, and kind of the way I envision this looking, uh, used golf carts are at a premium right now, just like used cars are, so we can get top dollar out of the carts that we have. Um, we should be able to get enough money out of those carts to cover the first three years of the lease. And I'm looking at um, probably a four year lease on the carts. That would include maintenance, all maintenance, except for vandalism, basically, or someone crashed into a tree, you know, the, but the regular wear and tear, um, that's all covered in the lease agreement. I'm eventually going to propose, maybe next meeting or whenever the time's right, a $2 increase on cart, cart fees. That $2 I would like to put into a separate fund that is strictly for carts. Uh, we did $125,000. We're going to be about $125,000 cart rentals this year. So it's $2 a cart. That's $250,000 a year. That is about exactly what the lease payment would be for brand new carts, of course. So we're always staying ahead. Um, the first three years we paid for, that would give us three years to collect that two fifty dollars every year and put toward the new lease. So we're always ahead. It doesn't affect our budget because we're still taking the same amount of payment. We have new carts. We're not breaking down. The service is much, much better. So um, that's a plan that I'm definitely going to present to you guys, and, and we'll get into the weeds of it next time, but kind of be thinking that over. Um, the carts, the other issue with all the equipment, all the carts is six months to a year out before. If we place the order right now for carts, six months or a year. Um, so that's not anything that I want to kick the can down the road of you get that in place. So um, my hope at at Auburn, we can do batteries, so I would like to get, we have enough the infrastructure to charge the carts and have them stored with, with chargers. So I'm wanting to do lithium carts there. Um, there's no maintenance, no watering. Um, there's a little bit more expense, but I think that I'll get into it with a presentation with you guys next time. Um, and then the other courses for this round, I will probably go all gas. I don't want to mix the half electric, half gas fleet, and we don't have enough space to charge the carts. Um, so go gas, and then we can look at over the next three or four years trying to figure out infrastructure so we could go all electric if that's what we decide to do. Um, yes, sir. 
question. I don't know. You may not be able to answer this, Mr. Hellman. Might. I thought a few years ago that we actually had a surcharge on carts. The pros may know uh, to enhance or build a, a pool in order to buy carts. That didn't happen. We had. We talked about it. Okay. We talked about it. We <laughs> talked about it. Uh, several other things popped up and. Obviously, the idea of having outside management squashed it. Then we had some other changes going on, and then we decided to have this board instead of the old uh, golf advisory board. So my frustration is that we've been this down the road for at least three years we're talking about this. Um, so that's why I'm excited that Jesse is rolling up his sleeves and, and making this happen because there's some things that we need to talk about not just talk about we need to make action take action on things rather, rather soon and rather quickly so we didn't want to put it on to you guys this month <laughs> and just uh weigh down your shoulders overly uh with uh some decisions but that and uh pass rates uh is, is going to be something we're going to be talking about in the future as well because we're leaving money on the table and what jesse's been talking about is and, and showing We've been doing really well budgetarily. <clears throat> we're ahead of the game. We're in the black. Four years ago, five years ago, we were definitely much in the red. And that was a really bad time. And so things have changed now, and we need to stay ahead of the curve, stay in the black as we move forward, um, while still putting money back into the courses. So that that's the basic formula that we need to be working on. And earlier, you had mentioned about irrigation. And one of the things I've been really working on, and, and Jesse's been helping out, is we want to have a really solid foundation for our enterprise fund, making sure that all of our customers are happy and that there's actually a really strong vision and future. Once that happens, I'm going to be looking at using capital funds that's outside of the enterprise fund. Capital funds are, are dollars that we use for police stations and fire stations, and fire trucks. Um, I'll be making the pitch so that we can actually have those funds pay for irrigation. Um, that'll be outside of the enterprise fund because we'll never be able to afford everything with just the enterprise fund. If we have about, I'm um, sorry, a million dollars in the bank, but it's going to cost us five or six million dollars to do an upgraded irrigation system. So, so that was a long answer to your question. But I thought it'd be a good opportunity to share all that. Well, that same question on the back side of that. I thought at one time, and I, it may still be there, we had a little surcharge in order to start replacing equipment for these poor guys running 1990 mowers, what that's, have you. That's my next topic. We do have that. Okay. <laughs> what would be the risk of a reward or perhaps um, cost that city could could coup? And I don't, I'm new, so, and I don't know the all the laws, or everything, but allowing people to bring their own car where you're not maintaining their car, you're still charging a trail fee. Yeah, we, we actually just implemented that. Um, so we, we have that in place. Auburn, we're kind of rolling it out there just because so many carts on the house. Randy is actually part of that program, uh, but we put that in place. Um, we're, we're kind of, we're not advertising it like crazy just yet, just to make sure we work the kinks out before we go full force. But um, yeah, we do. We have that in place. Um, the other issue at the other courses, um, Sim, really just at Sim is parking. I mean, if people, there's not a lot of people that live on the course, so they would be trailering the carts in. You get four or five trailers, we lost half our parking lot. So um, that that one's a little tricky, but the other two, we're, we're definitely going to do that. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, yeah, I'd be curious to know that the number would be is how much money you put into the actual cart. People beat it up. I've seen people drive out into the rough just looking for the ball. Sure. Tires, you know, batteries versus, hey, you're getting a trail fee no matter what. And it's the same amount or maybe more bringing your own car. Right. That's right. It's going to benefit the city. Versus Absolutely. Yeah. And that was, to me, it was a no brainer um, to get that in place. That was one of the first things that we started working on. Um, and as these carts get older, that expense that you're talking about just continuously go. I mean, every week we're doing more and more and more to keep these carts alive. In the past, it was kind of pushed, pushed away because there was concerns about liability. Um, and the other thing is over at Auburn was 
how do we control the carts from the neighborhood because everybody there has carts. That one is a little bit different situation to address, but we went and talked and figured out the liability issue and we are just <laughs> but we found a situation where uh, it, it was a positive situation. Where we had. So you're absolutely right. It's somebody else's cart wear and tear. We're going to charge them when they come use the cart. So that's revenue for, right. for our parents. So and we're, we're implementing that. But <laughs> but what we did, we we created decals. So if you once you join that program, we inspect the cart, make sure the tire aren't going to do damage to the course, so forth. We put that decal on. Um, that way, if, if there's a marshal out on the course and they see a cart that's not one of ours, that doesn't have the decal, they know they may have just popped out of the neighborhood and hopped on the course. So um, trying to control that and have policing of, of that. Yeah, so on the on the golf cart lease, uh, you know, something to think about again for the next meeting. That's something that I, I really want to get moving on quickly. I just realized going back real quick to the renovations, I didn't give you guys the timeline. Uh, the architect sent us an email back today. They should have everything packaged, ready to put out for bid on January 9th. Uh, they'll give that to us. I'll work with our team internally to, to get that put out um, as soon as possible. Our hope is SIM and Tex, they're a lot smaller projects. We can get those done. They've, they've told us it would take probably less than a month to complete those projects. So we're looking at hopefully by the end of uh, March, realistically. Um, and then uh, Mac may take a couple of months, so we're working at segments and trying to figure out the best way where we're not disrupting uh, business. So uh, probably two months, probably start that March or April going into probably June, realistically, so um, to have complete. And our obviously we want to get it done as soon as possible because as we get these renovation done, that opens up much more opportunity for business, not only with our regular customers, but with outings as well. I get a ton of outings that they want to come to the courses, but our clubhouses just are not, uh, other than Auburn, uh, they're just not set up for a, for a good place to host a, a big event, so. Okay, maintenance equipment. We uh, we do have the, uh, the fund. It's a dollar from every green fee goes into this fund. Fund um, this year, we could have brought that up here. I think I'd, I'd email to you guys kind of all the equipment we've bought over the last couple of years. Um, this year, we just purchased two fairway mowers. They were used, got them on Purple Wave, but uh, we knew where they came from, knew the history of those. Um, got a really good deal on those. We got a new fairway mower at Auburn. Um, help me out, I'm drawing a blank. What else did we get? Uh, rough mowers, rough mowers. What's that? Mac didn't get anything. Well, he, he didn't act right. <laughs> oh. No, we did now, and then and this year, the plan is to get six new greens mowers. Our greens mowers are, they're on the last limit. Mean, it's, they're held together with bubble, tum and, bubble gum and duct tape, as the expression goes. So, um, six new greens mowers, a sprayer at Tex, and a new workman for Mac, at, uh, for Ron at Mac, uh, his, his, his shot. So, um, that's what's laid out right now as far as equipment this year and then we'll get in with you guys um, we'll definitely have discussions with these guys involved as far as planning out equipment uh beyond that but we, we definitely as you said that 1990 equipment that was supposed to retire 18 years ago and we're still trying to use it we, we've got to come up with solutions for that so is that a new equipment then or is that some more used stuff no the 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 only thing uh, or the uh, the two fair, um, fairway mowers, um, and our two yeah two fairway mowers. So Everything else is new. The six new greens mowers then. That's it's brand new. Be a new bid then. We're That's correct. Going to go through the city bidding process then. That's correct. Okay. Yep. They still allow you the right specs to specifically know uh, get a machine. I mean if yeah yes, I mean we're not because you don't want to get. Stuck with something that no, we no, we would write the specs exactly the way we want them. And if there's a company that doesn't offer a spec, they they don't meet the requirements. Yep. Like the step on your but no, the it's been about four years ago. We met with some of the people in the finance department, and like right now with the greens mowers, we've just solicited the, the quotes ourselves, and we turn the three quotes into finance, and they approve it. We don't have to go through the Send it out, wait two months to get responses, wait two months for somebody to look at this. So we've been able to streamline our purchasing. 
does that allow you to go through the city system then? Because you get municipality rates and stuff when you're buying that if you go through their purchasing. And for a lot of the stuff with uh, Toro, first tee. we had the first T facility. Toro offers discounting to first T facilities across the country. It's a significant difference. And yeah, so we're able we're able to uh, a lot of things that happen in multiple units, blah blah blah. Uh, yeah, every every order will be unique and you know moving forward we'll discuss it. But yeah, we're we are working hard to make sure we're getting on a rotation with this equipment and get out of the nineteen nineties. It seemed like Melinda Walker was an awful good person to work with. All right. Um, next up, the customer training, customer service training. This is something that, that I'm passionate about. We, uh, we have a training scheduled next Wednesday on the 10th. It's an all staff training. It's required. Um, it's a three hour training that I've done multiple, multiple times in the past. Um, but it, there's not been a lot of training with staff. They're to be honest. They're kind of, they start it's like, Hey, here's the computer. This is how you ring somebody up. Good luck. You know, there's no real training as far as how to interact and the things that we need to be doing. So um, I'm kind of using this training to kick off a huge customer service initiative. Um, once everyone's been through this training, then, OK, now that you, you've seen it and we're going to have those standards and the, the not only the policies for the customers, but the policies for um, staff as well. And I want everyone to have a good time and have fun, but we have to be professional. We have to make sure we're um, looking at uniforms for staff um, to be a little bit more just professional when you walk in um, and just kind of a, a code of standards that we need to operate by. My goal, I don't even like the term customer service. I like guest experience because customer service is a small part of what happens when they come in. It starts when they go online or when they call to book a tea time, it, it goes all the way through to the point they're leaving the parking lot. Everything they encounter in between, the clean the trash in the parking lot, if you know, the interactions they have with everybody or that do they know where to go they, you know are they being offered everything that should be all that stuff so we're really putting a focus on that i am um that's something that i'm extremely like i said i'm passionate and very excited to get that get that going and that's all i had on the slides um that oh the cart pass we that there are all, a lot of little projects that we'll, we'll get into cart pass not a little project but um they're very expensive but there are segments of each golf course that are in dire repair uh they'll beat you to death when you take a cart uh, over those those sections of cart path the picture he showed is um very representative of several sections of pass so uh, we'll put those Kind of things together as we get through the meetings to figure out you know with your guys help and input what we, which how we want to address these things um and again i'll ask from you as you guys are on the courses as you're playing if you, if you notice little things bring it bring it back to me and make sure that i'm aware that we're aware so we can address it um i don't want you to turn into us where we can't even focus on playing golf because we're looking at every little thing but i do appreciate the help that any help that you can provide Okay, any questions on projects? Any other big ticket items that you guys have, have thought about that need to be addressed? All questions in part, clubhouse. And I didn't hear whether Colin mentioned it or not, but they've had a lot of trouble with their urinals plugging and everything else over there. Has that been addressed? Flooded floor, the whole work. Yeah, we had them, we've had them fixed again, but they've fixed them about five times this year. And it seems like every couple of months they, they have trouble again, but um, so it's a problem in the lift system because they replaced the line going out of the clubhouse earlier in the year. Yeah, I mean, um, and then we've replaced some uh, some of the batteries that are in there and the the units, but um, but mainly they were plugging up, and um, but they've replaced some of the pieces as well. So and that's still a problem. That's I'd like to see added to your list. Look at it anyway. Yeah, and the. Um, and then the leaks through the through the ceiling were the condensation lines from the AC. So got that taken care of. All right. Any other questions? No, we're on the six o'clock hour, so we'll try to not stay too much longer. Um, next up is a marketing update. Um, this is Shanna Appahan, she's our marketing director. Uh, I'm going to let her give a little quick update on marketing. You're watching that swing, right? I know. <laughs> 
I was really proud of my live video here and he started critiquing the swing. So um, good afternoon. Thanks so much for having me today. I'm Shanna Applehands, Marketing Communications Manager for the Park and Recreation Department. And just to give you a little background before beginning in my current position, I worked in the golf division for 11 years, handling marketing technology, troubleshooting for customers on day-to-day -day needs. So I'm very familiar with the golf division, what's transpired over the last couple of decades and the changes that have uh, happened, and I'm very happy to be able to continue as it's golf in their marketing. Our brand is Golf Wichita. In 2012, the five golf courses at the time were identified as the city courses, city of Wichita public courses, the city municipal courses, and so on and so on. So the golf division began being identified in all of the marketing efforts as Wichita public golf courses. In 2019, the city of Wichita was revising its logo and outsourced the Gretemann Group for the project and after completion of the new city logo there were funds remaining to rebrand wichita public golf courses to golf wichita this undertaking took the existing four logos and revitalized them into modern sophisticated logos that you would expect to see at golf courses today these logos all tied into the golf wichita brand following standards color palettes and have unique characteristics of the courses they represent You'll notice very little change in the Auburn Hills logo. Uh, the golf dimples were removed towards the bottom of the U shape, and we brought the grass dimps within the horseshoe um, that you see uh, transpire throughout all of the remaining logos. Um, due to Auburn Hills logo having a massive representation of all of the neighborhoods around the golf course, it was imperative that we did not uh, make drastic changes to those and have the other three logos follow suit. So rebranding is a slow process for municipal golf courses um, because removing the old logos from the site are costly and it just happens over years. So in 2023, you'll see signage change at the entries of Arthur B. Sim, McDonald, and Texcan Silver. And here on the left, you see what the existing signage looks like and what it's going to change to in the next couple of months. You'll see the new signage start going up. Um, this new sign here at Tex is eight feet tall by four feet wide. It's going to be very noticeable coming down South Tyler. And it follows all the Golf Wichita brand standards. Golf Wichita utilizes social media for marketing efforts. We have a Facebook page with over 3,400 followers. And in the past 28 days, our cumulative reach has increased 212%. Um, we also utilize Wichita Park and Recreation's Instagram and Twitter accounts to share our programming and promotion. Uh, we see the most engagement on social media when we're sharing our stories versus pushing our programming. Like when Scott was talking about the holiday open house at Auburn Hills, um, sharing a lot of photos from that. I have a photo of Randy up on our social media page smiling because I think he won one of the raffle giveaways that night. So we see a lot more engagement with things like that. Um, email marketing allows us to regularly stay in touch with our customers in a personalized way and typically helping to generate revenue by highlighting upcoming programming that's available. And the Golf Wichita email database currently consists of over 15,000 emails. Um, utilizing email marketing also draws attention to our website, golfwichita.com. And in 2022, the website had over 76,000 users, 144,000 sessions, and 252,000 page views. And over 76% of those users to golfwichita.com were new users. In 2018, the USGA evaluated the golf division, and something we took a lot of pride in during their visit was that they stated the website was one of the top three they had reviewed in the nation, um, being visibly appealing, easily navigated, and a full source of information. Uh, the Golf Wichita mobile app is a staple of the marketing arsenal. With almost 24,000 downloads, it's proven to be the preferred means of communication with our customer base. This one is one that I take very seriously because it's my baby. And I think it is the greatest tool that we have in the entire division as far as communicating with our customers. Currently, we have almost 8,000 active downloads and of those 65% receive our push notifications. We are ranked number four in the world across this provider's platform. They have over 900 apps with golf courses throughout the United States and Europe. Um, golf Wichita push notifications have been received by devices over 2.7 million times. This is ranked number one across the Gallus golf apps. And Golf Wichita has 2,654 loyalty program participants, which is also ranked number one across all of the Gallus golf apps. Uh, 
And currently the golf division has two marketing campaigns in place. Last November around Thanksgiving, we started a venue rental campaign department-wide showcasing Auburn Hills and the seasons in Watson Park as the premier venues for events in the department. And the benefit of golf being in the Wichita Park Recreation Department is the resources that come with it. And in this case, an entire paid media campaign was split between the golf division and the recreation division. Um, since uh, this campaign started around Thanksgiving, I believe Kevin stated that we have five contracts already in place at Auburn Hills. So um, the commercial, oh, well, there we go. Okay, um, the commercial is streaming on Hulu, YouTube, Pinterest, TikTok, Instagram, and Google Discovery. And this will go through Valentine's Day. Um, this is driving traffic to scheduled tours, uh, view Auburn Hills for wedding special events or business meetings and outings. Um, we've added a drop down menu on the website to include the event capabilities that are now in place after hiring our new F&B manager. And all inquiries are going to Kevin so he's able to schedule tours, go over catering option, and book events at the venue directly with the client. Uh, the other campaign currently running is our Hook a Kid on Golf. And this is one of our most popular programs and generally fills up within the first week of opening registration. We actually just uh, opened registration yesterday and within 24 hours we had over 20 kids registered, which uh, we take 48 total. Um, so that's pretty impressive within the first day. Um, each golf course hosts this one week camp during a spring break and provides instructions, place time on the golf course. They have a pizza party on the last day and they get lots of swag. But the best part is every participant goes home with a brand new set of golf clubs. So you can see why it's one of our more popular programs. Uh, all right, and in 2023, marketing will be elevated from the past few years due to funds in 22 being encumbered into the 23 marketing budget, allowing for additional marketing efforts. Uh, paid di digital media consisting of Google paid search, Google app downloads, Google discovery, and YouTube highlighting the golf division offerings along with the multiple construction projects, improving facilities. The Golf Wichita Annual Guide will return in 23 after not being published for two years due to COVID. Um, we'll be printing 7,500 copies, distributing at all golf courses, City of Wichita facilities, and Visit Wichita. This is a great tool for inquiries in the clubhouses regarding programming, as well as excellent training tools for staff when uh, new employees come on. Um, digital boards are being added into the clubhouses, and those will start popping up in spring, allowing for direct marketing to existing customer base, and it. it it's going to bring more awareness while they're in the clubhouse. So if they may not be on our social media or receive our email blast, we'll definitely be able to grab their attention while they're in the clubhouse. Um, you'll find these in heavy traffic ways, and we'll be able to create programming specific to the courses on each of these devices, along with division level programming and even department level. Um, it's easy to access, and we can do it on the if you need to. And then the final thing that's new in 23 is staff have been given access to the course specific Facebook pages. And this is allowing them for more storytelling and sharing day to day content. And this will enable the growth on the course pages and grow our reach on social media while educating the public about the brand. And the last thing I want to mention, I think Nate brought it up, is you guys actually have your own um, web page on our website under the About Us tab on golfwichita.com. So it's a way for people to uh, view these meetings, see the agendas, contact you if they have any questions. So I just wanted to let you know that's out there. And Nate, your info is on there. You're good to go. And I stand for any questions. You have a question? Oh, no. <laughs> I thought you were going to answer. I know. I'm kind of hurt. He doesn't have a question for me. I did have a, so is there a specific social media manager for the, for the golf Wichita? I, I I maintain the Golf Wichita account. You got a lot of jobs, right? I do. Yeah. So I think one thing that uh, is the numbers were the numbers for social media and everything aren't really good for something as big as Golf Wichita. So if we increase those numbers on social media, which if you probably just gave one job, you know, like most big companies or anything that's great, just like one social media management person, just because it's a lot of work that they got Facebook. Instagram, Google, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, and it goes on and on and on. 
Um, also, you can monetize from there too. So like I was looking at the pages on social media and um, that could really draw in a lot more people, especially the younger golfers and everything like that. Um, so I think if there was a lot more emphasis on social media, then the numbers would go up a lot. You get a lot more and that's part of the plan with having the golf staff at the course having access to their specific page so they can also share content from the Golf Wichita page to their page and vice versa, really doing that storytelling because we don't see a ton of engagement with the 34 to 3,500 followers that we currently have. I think the statistics show only 3% of your followers actually see what you post in their daily feed. So trying to grow those two specifically, as well as grow brand awareness of Golf Wichita, I think the two are going to play hand in hand. My thing is, too, even if you, uh, like if you had a social media management person and you really focused on that, you could monetize your social media accounts and that could really put a lot of money. I don't know if you guys realize how much money comes from social media, but you could put a lot more money back into this from that. But I don't think it'll, I don't think the social media will go anywhere as long as there's someone like, I mean, you're probably great at your job, but if you have a ton of jobs, you won't be able to run social media. It just will never work. So I think if you guys do implement in the future, like maybe you're like, hey, we hire a social media management person, that could probably amplify a lot more. Uh, it'll probably bring back a lot more money. Because if you have, say you got somebody out there and they're posting every you're posting at least once a day per golf reels and you get that you got hundreds of thousands of followers and you got thousands of views now you're making thousands of dollars a month at least four to five thousand dollars a month right now you're not getting any of that you know what i mean mm -hmm. and one of the nice things with jesse coming on board is that he is not uh afraid to be in front of a camera like he willingly does it. I asked once and he says, yeah, let's go. And so we really have a good time out of the courses, shooting videos, doing things like that. And that's something you'll see on our pages. We did a lot in the end of September, October, that we'll be doing a lot more in 2023, capturing that video content. Steve takes a hit from the <laughs> The one with him and Jack. Yeah, he'll be deflated. All right, down to the last item on the board. And that is a food and beverage update. And I'll be quick. And that is Kevin Bishop. I'm going to jump right in. Um, so when I started, I started looking at how much we make per round. And considering I come from full service restaurant business for 30 plus years, and we have a captive audience basically for five hours. We have you on our golf course. And in 2021, we averaged $2.74 per golfer, which is less than a beer basically one Pepsi per golfer, and some of them are making up. But we've done better. We've increased it by 68 cents in, in 2022 um, and generated a lot of that revenue with pretty much with actually less rounds, we've generated more revenue, but we're not even close to where we need to be. Um, I put a goal for 550, which is still on the low end and talking to Jesse on the courses in Virginia that he did, the worst of his nine courses, I believe, was in the $6 range, and he had courses that were up in the $15 range per golfer. But we have to offer better things in order to do that. Part of it, and we've already seen it already out at Auburn Hills, is people are hanging out because we made it a better atmosphere to hang out. We've got music going on, we've got TVs on, and people are hanging out and spending a little more money but the food offerings still aren't there yet because we don't have the staff to do it. And Auburn Hills is the only one that has a full kitchen right now. Um, just comparing in the area, um, what people are spending, this is the price for a burger, fries and a Coke. And we've all been to five guys, they're packed and it's 20 bucks a person for burger, fries and a Coke down to even McDonald's is $6 a person. 
and we're again nowhere near those numbers. So the goal is to settle some work. <laughs> um, this is a tentative menu that we put together for Auburn Hills where they're gonna offer different appetizers, a burger menu, sandwiches and melts, uh, subs similar to a Subway type setup with different offerings, some healthier, ver healthier things, salads and finger foods, and then sides. Um, just some quick stuff I put together. We added a bratwurst in a couple of the places that's going well. Uh, the Philly cheesesteak, I did some at the um, Scott's uh, little holiday party thing. We did demos. We did demos of the Rubens. We had queso out there, jalapeno poppers, which are extremely popular with the men's club out there. They're always... <laughs> Just talking to the people that were there. Heard a lot of raves about the cheesesteak and the Rubens both. People love them. And that was just me doing everything. So once we get everybody in and trained, it can be a regular deal. But people don't hang around because we don't have, we have hot dogs, basically. We have hot dogs and beer. And if we can do more, we can make more money and all that money goes right back into that fund to improve our courses. Um, Southwest egg rolls were a huge hit. It's a chicken black bean egg roll. Um, these mini tacos went over very well. They used to have a taco Wednesday out at Auburn Hills that we'll probably bring back. I don't know if we'll do Wednesday, but we'll pick a day, but it was a huge, they sold out every week and they had people, for those of you that know Auburn Hills, there are not a lot of restaurants around that area, period, for a lot of housing. And the ones that are out there are very pricey. Um, so if we can offer something, we may have people coming in for lunch that aren't even golfing if we have some good offers at decent prices um, we're also looking at we're working with nate who took um we're working on getting a liquor license for auburn hills to try out and if it, everything goes well this is another way to create a lot more revenue all of these is fairly a new market over the last two years they've started doing these pre-canned sodas or pre-canned uh they're they're regular drinks so you have crown and coke and margaritas and tank and tonic and Bacardi Coke, and then Cutwater is one of the biggest names in the, in that industry, and they're doing a whole bunch. And Jesse's the one that told me about the vodka transfusion, which is huge at, where'd that start? At Pinehurst, where they do a million of them a year, and people drink them like water. But there's a huge amount of revenue being lost by just having the beer and not offering these things. Plus, for Auburn Hills, it'll be a huge deal because I've met with people for weddings and they ask about liquor for their wedding and i tell them we only have a beer license right now and i've lost some events because of the fact that we don't have liquor license um we're also going to bring on energy drinks we have a contract with pepsi and pepsi just recently within the last year uh, got the rights to distribute the celsius drinks which have become huge um they're gaining a huge market share in the in the uh, market Pepsi was just doing their Rockstar brand, which has, Jesse and I looked at it, it was like 0.3% of the market or something horrible, but they're not big sellers. And we actually, I believe, tried them years ago and they didn't sell. These are these are a real hot item right now. I was in Vegas about three months ago and they're walking down the street, the Celsius, handing them out and getting, they're just out there spending money trying to get people to try their stuff. So that's coming very soon. Um, Probably in the next two, three weeks, we'll have those out on the courses. Um, just a quick, and it's not going to mean much to but to anybody, but so we're clearing out the whole kitchen area, and what I'm doing is setting it up so it's a lot more. I can do more of this stuff at every golf course. They'll have sandwich units. They will have some ovens that I'll show you in a minute and some types of grills. So I'm just rearranging this so it's more of a workable kitchen because as is right now, McDonald's, isn't workable. X is a little box. Uh, Sim is hidden behind a wall and you can't see anything. So we're changing all that. So this is kind of how McDonald will go uh, in the remodel. Um, Sim, they actually had a pass through window at one time that was covered up. It's right below that five foot sandwich cooler because their kitchen is around the corner. So we'll be able to make food and hand it out in a window just like a regular restaurant. And then Tex was the hardest to do because he's got a box. So I had to <coughs> work with different things to get all the, the stuff in, but I wanted the beer coolers to be visible. So I put it on the back wall. Um, so that's kind of the rearranging of Tex. 
And these are some of the ovens. You see these at uh, every subway in the country called the Turbo Chef oven. It's it's basically three ovens in one. It's a air fryer, it's a convection oven, and it's a microwave all in one unit. And you can make from, I think Jesse said he used them for pizzas. You can make a pizza in a minute and a half. Um, but every sandwich, you can, you can do fried foods in them with the air type fryer, but they're extremely versatile and durable ovens. And then the other way we'll get away without putting in hoods, which is way too expensive to do, is using these um, panini type grills, but they're flat. And I can do a burger in there in a minute and a half, fresh cooked burgers. Questions, comments? You need to have one, two on that. I knew you would. Uh, um, so you said Auburn Hills is getting a full liquor license. Um, have you guys thought about the Tex course getting a full one too, since they do more rounds of golf? We're going to start at Auburn Hills just because we have the event center. So it makes sense. I'll be able to book a lot more events because I have the liquor. And then we'll do the test out on the course with these canned drinks and stuff like that, the actual drinks in the clubhouse. And you pointed out with us at Auburn that we have a spot to actually build a bar, to have a real bar in there, which I think would be huge. Uh, so we're going to start with one and then as things go and if, you know, run it as a test, which I think is going to succeed. Yeah, the only thing I, the thing I wanted to mention was, uh, now with the liquor license, because you'll probably get like the drinking establishment license or something like right. that. Now you can sell drinks to go. So Spangles, I think I already mentioned it to you, Spangle sales went up 38% when they sold, sold alcohol to go. So if Tex had a full liquor license, imagine if you had a sign up on Tyler Road that said margaritas to go. I mean, that's a lot of... There's a lot of money to be made in... The airport? There's a lot of money to be made in alcohol, so... I mean, yeah, there's a ton of money on the table right now. That 550 estimate, yeah. I think when things get rolling and after a full year, we should be up over $10 easily. And that puts that I think in the future, to alcohol to go could be a conversation from the golf. It's, yeah, it comes right. with the drinking establishment. That's exactly why you're here. <laughs> you didn't get rid of it after COVID, so you can sell next drinks to go now. It's legal, yeah. Yeah, perfectly legal. A <laughs> real quick question. Sure. Would it be wise to have some sort of app? You're on seven, punch in your order, it goes in, you pay right there. So if they don't show up, yes. boom. <laughs> so that is in the order. We are, that's one thing I actually forgot to mention today. Our uh, point of sale system, our T sheet booking system, the system we use in, in the clubhouse is, uh, it's, it's, antiquated. it's limited. And that option is not available to, to us right now. We've been following different uh, systems. If we go to the PGA show, we're going to look at every system that exists and then um, and demo that. But that is with, we've also been working with our current uh, system, to be fair, to make sure we're utilizing everything, all of its capabilities. So we're, we're unlocking some things that we didn't know, but um, to try to figure out what the best option moving forward for us. Just keep the pace of play, you know, so yeah. you're waiting. There, waiting. Even if it's a minute, we're still yeah. Yeah. hurry in. We've discussed putting signs up at the AT box, order your food now to be ready and at Tex, actually, they have a drive through window that's not being utilized where you can drive your cart right through there. It's already paid for, hand it and go. Um, Sim kind of does, but you can't get a cart in there. Um, so, yes, we are very much looking at that because there's a lot more money lost. And the revenue we don't get from our beverage carts because we can only take cash right now. Not a lot of people carry cash anymore. And if we were out there being able to take credit cards on the course, we're leaving a lot more money on the table. Our uh, our technology is way behind right now, so we're working on that too. One other question, real quick. In the old days, the omnibus was on the pro to have the liquor license. Is that changing? I, I didn't hear the question. The old days, the pro had to have the liquor license. We are so that's we. we there are some hurdles that we're having to figure out to work with Nate to on this liquor license, and we're not there yet. So we're working through um, a few different options that. Hopefully in the next week or two, we'll have all that ironed out and figure out how we can do that the correct way. Any other questions? As for having something on the agenda for the next meeting, say hypothetically, we want to talk about that, raise the card fee, mm -hmm. next amount of dollars or whatever. Is that something that you just go ahead and put on the agenda for next meeting or somebody, how do we... What's the process? I believe you, you could. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't want. Well, 
Nate left, and I don't want to say the wrong thing here. That's the <laughs> so for this particular meeting, we created the agenda. Typically, we like to get the agenda from the board and kind of <clears throat> meet the needs that what you're looking for. So there's always a collaboration. And what I do with the park board is I will put it together and share it with the park board president and see if it meets his needs and the expectations of what we have going forward. But there's a ton of things that we need to get going. And Jesse knows what that is. And he's going to get that on the agenda. And so next month when we select president, um, I'm going to have Jesse go through the process of creating a uh, an agenda and, and make sure it goes through the president for his approval so that the uh, that will be present for the next meeting. So he'll be the president that will approve the agenda in between meetings. Any other questions or comments? Anything else that anyone has before we wrap up? All right. So uh, it looks like we picked third Tuesday um, at 4 p.m. So that looks like that would be it'll be quick this time just because you know it's, it's changing. So it'll be the January 17th at 4 p.m. Um, and then after that, we'll be on a month. You know, every month. So. Uh, we'll get two meetings pretty quick, which I think is great because now we can move forward quick and get the process rolling on some of these things. Um, so January the 17th, and we'll, of course, send out the invites um, at 4 p.m. It'll be back in this room, and then uh, Ms. Alterman, obviously, we'll, we'll do the team's invite again for you. Um, but one last time before I wrap up, I want to say thank you all very, very much. Thanks for your time tonight. I think we went over about 30 minutes, but it's a lot of information. Please reach out to me, call me, email me if you have questions, if there's anything you'd like to see, uh, I'll, I'll do my very best to get you any information that you need. So um, that, we can bring a close to the meeting. Thank you all very much. Anything? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yes. Well, yeah, yeah. A lot of your questions will come my yeah, way. Yours, yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say those. Uh, I'll definitely uh, bring that up just because I.